Welcome to South Field big game tonight here in the Intercounty League North. It is the Turner Small Thunder taking on the Frontier Red Hawks. I'm Jeff Terrell along with Sean Hubert. Our studio producer tonight is Dave Reno. So great that you could be with us tonight. A big game, Sean. Hopefully we'll match up to the hype. Two teams with identical records, 4-1 and one overall. A perfect 3-0 and oh in the league. The loser of this game is still in good shape in terms of the postseason. Maybe not for winning a league championship, but they're still in good shape for the postseason. The winner will be sitting pretty. You know, I, I love the timing of this game. You know, we always look forward to Frontier Turners. Every season when the schedule comes out, that's one of the ones we're going to look for, right? Because we know it's going to be important at some point. I'm so glad they didn't play this week two or week three or week four. Yes. You know, now we know. Now we know these two teams, uh, you know, the winner of this game has the inside track to the Intercounty League title. Both teams still have the opportunity for a playoff berth. Um, but a little later in the season, big game, two good teams. I don't see this not being a great football game tonight. I just don't. Both teams had stellar seasons last year. Turner's Falls didn't quite make the postseason. Frontier did. They won a playoff game against South Hadley. Then they play uh, Wakona in the Western Mass title game. Lost decisively there. They lost a lot of talent from last year's team, but they are right back in the mix again. Let's talk about the Red Hawks first. The more things change, the more they stay the same. They graduate a truckload of talent, but they're still getting great results with the kids they have this year. Yeah, absolutely. We've talked about those guys all year long in Landry and, you know, the kids that have been here the last couple, three years. There's always somebody back there that can do the job. And this year, we're looking at a couple of different kids. Garrett DeForest, he leads the team with 698 yards on the ground and 11 touchdowns on the season. Not quite Landry-like numbers, but still pretty Pretty darn darn good. And you're looking at McMillan as well with 364 yards. He's missed one game this season, only found the end zone once. Josh Samaski, we'll see him out of the backfield, the fullback. He'll get some carries, 156 yards on the season for him and a touchdown. But uh, the quarterback position is intriguing to me it, it, right now with this team. And we've seen Hildreth all season long. We saw him last year and we knew he could run. He's an athlete. You know, they don't use him a lot outside the tackles. There are not a lot of plays meant for him to keep the ball. And he's not going to throw the ball a lot. He's only thrown it 25 times this season. Eight for 25 the entire season. Actually, the first two games, he was seven out of 15. Right, yes. Hasn't thrown much at all in the last four weeks. Um, but they ran the Wildcat a little bit last week, and uh, they used DeForest as the quarterback, and they threw to Hildreth. To get that kid in space, he's quick. Um, so, you know, who knows if that'll be part of tonight. It, it makes the gamesmanship fun. Like you said, the time of the season is fun. The playoffs is uh, all on the line here. It's going to be a great gonna be a great game. Well, you know, Sean, let's talk about Turner's Falls now because when a lot of people look for a difference between these two teams, you know, two tough teams. They're the two toughest teams to score on here in the Intercounty League North. Uh, great dynamic offenses, but... Some observers feel that Turner's Falls might be a little more diverse because Dodge has had some big numbers, and of course the running game has been phenomenal. Well, and, and what we just said, so Hildreth has only tried to throw the ball 25 times all season long. Look at the numbers Dodge is putting up this year, 37 uh, to 72, 619 yards. He's thrown nine touchdowns. He's thrown five interceptions, but kid's a weapon back there and we've seen be a he's got some escapability too he can they don't necessarily run him a lot but he can run if he needs to uh, but yeah it, it, look at what Andy Craver has done this year 12 catches leads the area with 310 yards five touchdowns for him Jaden Whiting we knew these were going to be the guys coming in right 12 uh, catches for him this year 170 yards three touchdowns for him the X factor to me is John Torres now, he was kind of the forgotten guy in all of this mix. You know, when you're going to look at Wyatt Keith, we'll talk about his numbers. We'll talk about Dodgy's numbers. A couple other guys are going to catch the ball, run the ball a little bit. But I don't know if Torres is healthy enough this week, but that kid ran for almost 1,000 yards last year. Oh, yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah. you know, he's if he's, uh, <laughs> they get him back healthy and he's in this football game, that could be a, a difference maker as well. So a lot of weapons and an, a possible merging, emerging a weapon for the Indians as well. That's Turner. right. Yeah, and, uh, of course, Wyatt Keith uh, coming down from the now defunct uh, Pioneer program, the new co-op program, the uh, partnership with Pioneer Regional. He comes down. He is creeping up on 1,000 yards already. We're not even, uh, you know, all the way through October yet. Yeah, when you pile in some numbers like against Greenfield when he ran 30 times for 239 yards. That was a good start. Oh, yeah. You only need a few of those to really start to add those up. He had three touchdowns. He's in high for him as well in that game. But yeah, I mean, uh, 33 carries, 216 yards against Athol. Had a, a score in that one. Uh, Mahar, last week, 32 carries, 216, and Paris scores. Uh, really, the lowest output he's had was week one against Lee. That was Turner's only loss, and uh, he carried the ball 19 times. He still got 100 yards, 107, didn't yeah. find the end zone. That's so, over five yards uh, of carry. It's been so, great yeah. for him all season long out of the backfield. We've only seen him once. I was so impressed. I just the kid can run inside, outside. He's quick. He can make you miss. He can run you over. He's athletic. Uh, and just he's a he's a he's a load. He's, he's going to be fun to watch. This is going to be a terrific football game. Again, a lot of offensive weaponry out here, but two defense.
offensive that have really stepped up this year, particularly Turner's fault. They're only giving up about 13 points uh, per outing so far this year. They, they have really deed up. Well, yeah, and again, after that week one loss against Lee where they gave up 21 points, you know, I thought, I thought put 26 on them. I mean, we saw a pretty good football team last week. I mean, uh, they could have scored 100 points if they wanted to, I think, against Mohawk. But, uh, yeah, they beat Athol 35-26 since then. They've only given up one touchdown in each of the next three contests. Greenfield scored the one, got the two-point conversion. They win that one 35-8 uh, against McGann. They ended up being 27-6 uh, in the Mahar last week. They got that touchdown. They get to, actually, the first one, they got the touchdown. But 27-8, uh, uh, excuse me, 28-7 was the final on that one. So, yeah, three straight games. This Turner's defense has only given up one touchdown. And I look at the numbers, too, as to what they've given up to the backs from the best back from each team that they played. And look at what they did to Bird against Greenfield. 36 yards they helped that kid. But otherwise, they really haven't had that much success at the beginning of the season. They gave a lot to the coach. Uh, Barrio had 215 against them, even though when they won that game. Um, Connor Bertrand had 118 against them for McCann. And uh, Garaby had 13 uh, carries for 102 yards in that hard game. So they're susceptible to the run, to a good running game. And we know Frontier has that. Always, every single year, they have at least one, and usually two or three really good backs. So again, a great matchup here. Four and one Turner's Falls, four and one Frontier. One of these teams will get their first league loss on this football field here tonight. Perfect night for football. It's clear and cool. Weather conditions just about ideal. We'll take a time out here on the pregame show. More pregame from South Deerfield as we continue here. This is Bear Country 95.3. Behind the Frontier sideline. Tonight is the last regular scheduled home game here for the Red Hawks. And as a tradition, we'll take time to recognize the Frontier seniors and thank them for their many years of dedication to a very successful Red Hawk football program. So we'll call out the seniors individually and they can come in and uh, greet their parents. The first senior, number seven, Matt Hildreth, his parents, Bill and Sherry Hildreth. We continue here on the pregame show, high school football, Bear Country 95.3. It's homecoming senior night Brandon here. Freeman. As they are now Nicole introducing Freeman. the Frontier Seniors, the Turner's Falls team still in their locker room. Hubie, let's talk about some of the other games happening tonight. Local football in Athol. We saw Number that Athol team. You know, they're not part of the postseason mix right now Brandon anyway, but uh, we were pretty impressed with them. Again, they're going up against an undermanned uh, Mohawk team, but they've got some good, skilled kids. They're taking on a Franklin Tech team that has not, has not quite worked out for the Eagles so far this year. Yeah, good Michael start right King, out the gate, put in the lights, big win at home, you know, uh, week one. And yeah, just uh, well, injuries obviously in week one and, and some guys that they're missing now too. And that's part of the, the equation. But the, the Red Raiders, yeah, I mean, they really were impressive. And uh, again, Mohawk, little under man, but still not a bad football team. You know, they're plucky, they work hard. And sure. uh, just Athol was just that much better. I mean, and they had so many guys they came at you with. And um, I was very impressed with the Red Raiders. Yeah, they have a, a very, 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 very slight chance of a playoff if they, yeah, they'd have to win and out. Number 80, yeah, going to need some help, but they looked good last week against, uh, against Mohawk, for sure. Speaking of uh, that game, by the way, is at O'Brien Field in Athol, where we were last Friday night, and that'll be a 7 o'clock kickoff moments away. Now, speaking of a team that doesn't is on the fringe, does not have a lot of wiggle room, if any at all. It's the Greenfield Green Wave. Uh, the several Hawks weeks seniors. ago, of course, they had easily their worst half of football, that sure second half back. against Turner's Falls. They only trail make Turner's 14-8 at halftime. Turner's outscores them 21 to nothing in the second half. Ends up winning it decisively 35-8. I mean, they put a pounding on the Green Wave in that second half. Since then, Greenfield has performed a lot better. They're now stockpiling some victories, couple of wins in a row, but they need that victory at home tonight against Mahar big time because, again, they have very little wiggle room. Well, in the week before that, we saw Greenfield here at Frontier, and we felt Frontier would be a home favorite. Maybe not a huge heavy home favorite, but a home favorite. And they, uh, you know, they took the lead. They dominated through three quarters. Now, a couple of mistakes helped, but Greenfield with a rapid comeback in the fourth quarter. I mean, it was one of those games we'd left for dead with eight minutes to go. And then all of a sudden, you know, Greenfield came back, had a little life, started throwing the ball. Uh, they had a couple of turnovers. Next thing you know, they've got the ball with the opportunity to actually tie the game so or take a lead. So 
you know, you were right there, and then uh, they lost that game. And it, it, the Turner's game was just shocking. It really was. I, I just, again, uh, Turner's held R.J. Bird to under 40 yards, and uh, that was just amazing what the line did both ways, offense and defense. It did not expect that. But, yeah, Greenfield seems to have a little bit going on now. They figured it out. Hey, listen, they didn't want to play any meaningless games. That's what they said, right? Finish yeah. the season with a, with a playoff game in their sights. They still have that opportunity. But, yeah, as you said, they cannot lose another game. They need to win and uh, potentially need some help. They are right on the fringe of that uh, fourth spot in Division Eight. Of course, the top four teams advance to the postseason in November. We're getting close. I mean, we're getting very close. It's uh, it's Friday, October 12th, so just a few more weeks of league uh, competition. Mohawk, they're on the road uh, tomorrow at uh, uh, up in North Adams against McCantech for an afternoon game. Again, it's been a long year for the Mohawk Warriors, but uh, we've tipped our We've tipped our caps on them because they've done their very best to compete. They're just, they've just been overmatched this year. Oh, absolutely. I'm watching uh, Turner's Falls run across the field as they've just entered the field and a lot of excitement on the far side. Big crowd building here, but yeah, again, we were there week one, Mohawk Franklin Tech. Mohawk ends up finishing the game with 12, he 12 healthy kids and it just didn't look good, you know, and, and our, our hopes were just that they'd be able to kind of hold that together for this season, and uh, they've done that, you know, and, and again, Coach McLeod is very proud of the kids that he has, and he is looking forward to the future. He's looking, he's putting at a sophomore quarterback that's six feet tall, and he's looking at a running back who's a, who's a freshman, and, you know, he's got some pieces and some parts, and he's excited about their effort. Uh, you know what? Good for them, and I hope Captain they can win a couple more uh, games uh, uh, through the end of this season. And, uh, and obviously, uh, we'll see them back on the field. And, uh, you know, it would be the best thing if I could ever see that team 12, make it back to the playoffs. You know, and, and I'm, uh, I think everybody in the Valley is pulling for that at some point. This year, not going to be the year, but, uh, boy, they, they, they've done a nice job up there. Uh, congratulations. So that will be a kickoff uh, tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock up in North Number Adams, Mohawk. And McCantech in the Tri-County League. All right, we'll 42. take a time out here when we come back. Starting lineups, the seven, national Matt anthem, Hager, and the opening kickoff, Garrett Turner's Garrett. Falls, Frontier, the game of the week here locally, game of the season so far. It's next on Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Daniel Gray is Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ service, voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Here'll be a huge crowd has gathered here. They get good crowds here anyway. When we have broadcast at Turner's Falls High, they get a good crowd there. Now you combine two of the better drawing teams on the same night in the same place. Got a lot of people from Turner's Montague Gill, the whole uh, Gill Montague District towns. They're all down here. And of course, a huge contingent here from Frontier. 
All right, we're finally ready. We've been waiting at least several weeks for this one, and now, now it's finally going to play out. There's like a little kid trying to go to sleep, like five more sleeps, five more sleeps. Yeah, no, this is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, you know when the band is all here and all in full dress, and uh, yeah, good crowd. And I'll tell you, driving around, heading somewhere, weren't sure you wanted to head that way. Head this way. Do yourself a favor. Take so a little concession down there and uh, enjoy a nice fall night and a great football game. You will not, uh, not, not regret it. Or people could do what you did and had, had two slices of pizza. Well, okay, all right. Well, yes, yes. Oh, is that not supposed to go out of the uh, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. Right. Speedo season's over. <laughs> all right. Turner's Falls has it teed up on the 40. They will be kicking to Frontier. We play 11-minute quarters. Turner's in the visiting white with the royal blue. Frontier in the home, crimson and navy blue. And Wyatt Keith. Trying to get outside the containment, but a nice return out across the 35-yard line, right around the 37. And that is where Frontier will begin their opening drive. Now, as we said in the pregame, Matt Hildreth threw the ball 15 times in the first two games. He was 7 of 15 for the season, 8 of 25. So he's only thrown the ball 10 times in the last four contests. Not sure we'll see him throw here a lot tonight either, but they've been working on the Wildcat. We talked about that a little bit. Let's see. And they come out, opening drive here. Shin on the line. It looked like the left side of the Turner's line, the right side of the Frontier line. Which way are we going? Right side on Turner's five-yard penalty. It will remain first down. Keep moving their audio in and out. First and ten Frontier from the Red Hawks 42-yard line. He's Here. And the first down carry right, will down go to the there. left side. Not a lot there, maybe just a half a yard. And that was Garrett well, DeForest Castine there. The stop for the Thunder. And Castine with the stop five, for Turner's Falls. No gain on a play. And uh, yeah, we're going to call it no gain. It'll be second down and five. Well, Castine's having a great year for that Turner's Falls line. And Garrett DeForest, again, 5'9, 165 pounds, just a junior, but leads the team with almost 700 rushing yards on the season. On second down, Hildreth gives to DeForest again, gets outside the containment, has the first down, steps out of a tackle, Hildreth goes over carry. another tackler as he went right over Craver, brings it into Turner's Falls territory, a first down at the TF 44-yard line. Yeah, sometimes even when you know it's coming, you just can't do anything about it. You see Kyle Dodge here on the corner, and he just got blocked efficiently enough. He's trying to reach out and grab the ball carrier. Got his hands on him, but not enough to slow him down an awful lot. Big gain there, 21 yards for Frontier. Well, DeForest again, the last couple of years, just used in spots here and there, awaiting his turn, and now he has definitely stepped up big. They go to Alec Kirkendall, the fullback right up the gut, Kirkendall and he moves the power carry. forward down to the Turner's Falls 35-yard line. That's a gain of nine. And It'll be second down and one. Stop. You know, I wrote this kid's name in on my chart here. He's just a sophomore, but he's yeah, seen some action. Box. Number 45. Second and two. He and uh, Josh Amaski will, will have a few carries in this one, but Alec gets the first one right there. DeForest gets two, and then uh, Kirkendall, the sophomore. Ball just outside the Turner's Falls 35 yard line. Second down and short. Now it's Ido McMillan, his first carry. He loses his footing Edo as he McMillan tried to cut. Carry. He's right near the first down marker. It looks, though, Sean, like he's going to be a little bit short after he slipped there. Yeah, it did. and it was a slip, too. You can just tell, by the way, his legs just kind of flew out from under. It looks like there's going to be no gain on that carry. And Yeah, McMillan's his second leading rusher on this team. So now we've seen, seen three different ball carriers out of the backfield. Again, nothing in the air, and it's going to be uh, third, is that third and about a yard, it looks like. Yep. Good yard there, maybe a short two. Oh, he missed it. He missed Handoff, Handoff goes to, uh, yeah, went to McMillan. He gets driven yeah, way McMillan back. His forward momentum, though, will spot him up a bit, but now it's going to be Driscoll. fourth down. So a, a drive that was going right down the field, third down now, and uh, rather fourth down, and about four. I don't know if that was supposed to be an inside handoff, but it looked like the handoff went to DeForest and then just popped right off his hands. Now, yeah. again, whether that was intentional to try to speed that play up, or it was actually just a bobble, but either way, yeah, that play was blown up. The Turner's line in there, and yeah, they're going to lose about five yards on that play. So fourth and long now, fourth and we'll call it six. Josh Samansky comes in for his first snap of the game, and now they will go shotgun, and now a flag down. 
as I'm not sure, maybe the quarterback there, Hildreth, was dropping back to punt potentially. Oh, maybe the quick kick here, that would make sense. And kind of flipped the field here a little bit. That penalty, penalty is going to go against Frontier, an illegal substitution. We did see a young man come off at the very end. So that's going to spot it back to the 45 yard line of Turner's Falls. Now it's fourth down and 11. Yeah, if they were thinking about any kind of shenanigans there, that's uh, kind of takes that out of play here on fourth and 11. If you don't line up on her center, is Hildreth. Yeah, then he'll drop back to punt. Now he will drop back, takes the snap, punts it away, kind of a line drive kick. Craver back at his 15 yard line, picks it up along the left hash mark. Now turns all the way to the right, looking to outrun the Frontier and coverage, but can't do so. Nice downfield coverage there by Garrett DeForest. Brought him down after a short gain, and now the Turner's Falls offense comes out for its opening drive. Yeah, great coverage there by DeForest. How much fun has Craver been to watch? Remember his brother Ricky Craver and oh, yeah. how much fun he was? And that poor kid just had injury after uh, injury. Yeah. Remember week one down in East Hampton his uh, senior year. Messed up his ankle, he had a leg problem the year before, and uh, boy, what an athlete he was. But his little brother is getting it done out there. But he could not get around to Forrest on the corner. Gonna start about their own 11 yard line here, Turner's Will. Yeah, the ball is actually uh, closer to the 15, I think. We have a, yeah, right around oh, the 14 yard go. line. Coming in motion is Whiting, and the first down give on the left side is going to go for Wyatt Keith. Just a short gain, maybe two yards across the 15 to the 16. We'll call it second down and eight. Well, again, we've talked about this kid all season long. He's, he's just a dynamic runner. Uh, he's a big kid. He's, he looks a little wiry. He doesn't look big and strong, but he is big and strong. 6'1", 190. His senior year coming on down from Pioneer and putting it together on the field. Should hit his 1,000 yards tonight. Waiting goes to the far side left. And the handoff again goes to Wyatt Keith. Wyatt Keith found a carry. hole. It did close, but he made a nice game before he got tripped up. It'll be short of a first down, but a, a doable third down at about three for Turner's Falls. And the ball just across the 20 yard line. Yeah, we're going to see a heavy dose of Keith out of the backfield tonight. We have a few other guys for Turner's that are, will come out of the backfield every now and again. We'll see Craver possibly. We might see Whiting every now and again. Again, Dodge may have a carry here or two. He's got good scrambling abilities. Well, the thing about Turner's Falls offensively, when you got the good running backs, you can it really opens up the play action. And Dodge is so good at selling the run and then finding his guy out of the I formation. They will go on the hand up to Keith. They got hit in the backfield. It's DeForest again who came up and popped him for a loss. It'll be fourth down now. Yeah, that's a play Keith can usually get to the corner and get the first down with, but. They're going to call it no gain, actually. Yeah, they were so quick to get to him that, yeah, right back at the line of scrimmage. So now Turner's Falls. Well, is there a little Doug McLeod in uh, Chris LaPointe? <laughs> 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 we saw Mohawk go about this deep in their own end on their first possession. Didn't work out. Yeah, he is going to have Keith punt here, evidently. And the snap goes back. Wyatt boots it away. Kind of hit it off the side of his foot. It's a short kick, and it looks like it, and it takes a bounce for Frontier. Very short punt. I'll tell you what, Sean, I'm not sure what the yardage was on that, but that sets up Frontier with a very short field here. Yeah, he got under that. You could see, and there's the ball as it came off his foot, was the, had back spin on it, but he didn't hit it high or hard. It just kind of floated out there, and I thought it might even go out of bounds. Ended up staying in, but yeah, he, he just kind of missed that one. And Frontier is going to have optimal starting field position here inside their own 30-yard line, yes. not the 29. Um, let's see here, 40, oh, wait. 34 yard line. Somebody moved that line. And they're going to go shotgun. And now DeForest in motion of the right. Yeah, he, you can't be in, uh, that, yeah, that's going to be a well, legal motion right call. You can go in motion not right to left, but not forward. Well, if your feet are moving forward, that is a five yard penalty. So Frontier not helping themselves with the penalties here early on. No, a big not one at on all. The first possession. And now going to make themselves start first and 15. And that is inside the 40 yard line right there. So we'll call it the 39. 39 yard line, first down and 15. Couple receivers to the near side left, including McMillan and Freeman. Rolling to the right. This is the throw. It's going to be oh, caught down by Bloyd. And complete. that's close to first down yardage. That's out of that Wildcat formation. And that was DeForest throwing to Blight. Yeah, and Blight's been a little bit quiet this year, Corbin. He's a junior, six feet, 180 pounds. And what a well-thrown ball that was. We talked about how much Hildreth first wouldn't throw the ball tonight, and there it is. 15 yards and a first down on his first pass attempt. Yeah, and that was DeForest actually out of the Wildcat. Oh, there. right, there we go. Yeah, nope. That was DeForest who hooked up with him. So they weren't just playing for that. They were playing with that. They are uh, using it for real. Shotgun formation, Hildreth. 
And the handoff is going to go on the left side. Big gainer, it's Garrett DeForest breaking tackles and he brings it down to the Turner's Falls 20 yard line. And close to another first down, but a little bit short of it. Well, right now the foot speed advantage looks like it is frontiers, both sides, front uh, defense and offense. And again, DeForest just quicker than the other guys trying to tackle him. I wouldn't say it was bad tackling, he just kind of ran through a couple of guys. He's second and real short here. Yeah, from the 14 yard line. And the pitch is going to go to the first, oh, but he got blocked. Coming through Tyler Lavin and someone else. Dodge. It was Dodge. It was Dodge. Oh, yes. Yeah. Dodge came up and popped him back for a loss of a couple. Lavin held him up, and yeah, Dodge just blasted through. And that's the one you're going to feel tomorrow morning when you wake up. So Frontier here, they had a great opening drive, and then some penalties, some plays that went for losses, moved them back. They ultimately. Had to punt the ball away, and now they're getting bogged down again. Third down now at about four. Pitch goes to DeForest. He breaks a few same tackles play. this time. Yeah, exact same play. Uh, he was able to get back the yardage that he had lost on the previous play, but no more than that. Fourth down in about two yards now. The ball right near the 10 yard line of Turner's Falls. Now we talked about this Turner's defense coming in. They've given up one touchdown in their last three games. They gave up eight points to Greenfield, six to McCann, and seven last week to Mahar. This would be huge for that defense to stop them here on fourth, and we'll call it a yard, but a little bit yep. longer. Balls, a two. You know, balls right at the 15 yard line. Clock in motion, 4.15 to play in the opening quarter. We are scoreless here, Frontier and Turner's Falls, and what do we got? We have a timeout that is called by Frontier, and it's, Let's see. And we're going to keep it right here. Looks like it will. Not, they're not bringing the uh, guys to the bench, so this will be a quick timeout. We will keep it here. We have another broadcast for you tomorrow night here on Bear Country. We're heading out to Dalton, Wakona, the team that knocked out Frontier in the postseason, the Western Mass title game last year. Decisively, they're a power in Division Seven, the same division as Frontier, and the Warriors hosting the Northampton Blue Devils, and they're in a higher division, and they're. Hanging in there for the postseason. That's a big game for the Blue Devils. We'll have that one for you. It's a 5:45 pregame, six o'clock kickoff, live from Dalton. All right, 15-yard line, fourth down, and about one for Frontier. They go to their traditional format right now, and they go to Alec Kirkendall up the middle, and he's got the first down inside, right near the 10-yard line. First down and 10. Yeah, again, he's been used sparingly this season. He's just a sophomore, and we're number 45, Alec Kirkendall. Just a little inside first handoff to him. You could see the pile get pushed. We couldn't see him, but line. we could see that he was going to make the first down just by the way the bodies were moving backwards off of that Turner's Falls line. So a big first down there for the Hawks. They can get another first down, but he read right about the one yard line. Yep, the ball's on the 11. Now we have another timeout. This one is charged to Turner's Falls, and we will step aside for the break. 3.47 left to play here in the opening quarter. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne Falls scoreboard, it is Frontier nothing, Turner's Falls nothing. So the Frontier Red Hawks, one for one on their fourth down conversions. They get the first down with Alec Kirkendall right up the gut. And fourth and one, he brought it to the 11. First down and 10 from there. Frontier offense now back on the field. Turner's Falls has blown up a couple of plays, and they had that kind of weird play that happened on their last drive where the ball popped out of Garrett Forrest's hands. And then uh, ended up going to McMillan to the drop for a big loss. But other than that, they've uh, had some good success on the ground so far on that one completed pass. They go shotgun right now with Hildreth. Takes the snap. Fakes the handoff, goes to Garrett DeForest on the left Garrett side, takes it inside the 10, inside the five, down to the one yard line. It'll either be second and short or first and goal from inside the one. We'll see what they got. Yeah, and real quick, DeForest number adding up here, five carries, 42 yards, and it will be a first down. So he got to the one yard line. So first and goal from the one for the Red Hawks. That'll be tough to stop for Turner's Falls. Four cracks at it here. Yeah. Although Greenfield stopped Frontier, remember that game that was earlier? That drive, yeah. That was in the first half. Frontier ended up winning that one. They go to the forest on the right side, cuts it back inside, touchdown. One yard touchdown run by Garrett DeForest. And with 3.17 left in the opening quarter, it's 6-0 Frontier. Yeah, a little bit choppy for the offense. A couple of penalties, a bad play. Looked as though that drive might bog down as well, but they were able to get that big pass completion, 15 yards. Set up shop inside the Turner's 20, and from there they ran it in to four to six carries, 43 yards. 
on the game. He's in the end zone, so 317 to go here in the first quarter. Frontier is taking a 6 0 lead. Now they look like they're kind of confused with they're going to go for the two. Now they're going for the tea. Now they're going yeah, for the timeout. They, 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 were, sure. they didn't get the tea. Yeah, he was looking for the tea. They were going to get the extra point, and they had to burn a timeout for that. Yep. The assistant coach Scott Dredge is looking for that tea, and he finally found. There it is. It's, you, you have one job. Wow. One job. And they had to burn a timeout. Yeah. They had <laughs> someone who, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who the culprit He's was. He's not on the roster. He's but, got a number, but no roster name. I don't know but who that is. But that young person yeah. had one job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're kidding. A little. Well, a little. They did have to burn a timeout. They did so have to burn a timeout. Not, you know, if it gets late in the quarter. Coach ain't laughing about that right now. Late in the first half, I'll yeah. No. So Hildreth <laughs> will be kicking. That's coming up during film. That's the other thing about tonight's game, Sean. Two good kickers. Very good. Hildreth's kick is up and it is perfect. We'll take the timeout. 317 left to play here in the opening quarter. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard, Frontier 7, Turner's Falls nothing on Bear Country 95.3. Frontier now set to boot it away here. Turner's Falls will get their second opportunity, unable to really get anything going on their opening drive. And here comes the kick, it's a short kick, and it's going to come down to Whiting. The ball is loose, big battle for it, who has it? Turner says they have it. Officials will sort it, there's a big fight for the ball. Looks though that Turner's Falls did get it back. Yeah, you could see that thing. It bounced the entire time, and even once Whiting approached it, the thing, and it stayed low, too. It never really kicked up for him, and as he went down for it, it came up at him and just squirted out, and, and then the massive bodies came in. You can see Turner's was signaling they had got in it, and I'm not sure who did, but... I think it was, yeah. thir it was uh, 13. All right, so then that way... That was uh, that Jake, Jakey Dodge. Yeah, all right, old Dodge. So, yeah, so Turner's Falls does get the ball back. Oh, they're on 30-yard line to start this drive. Out of the eye formation, it's Wyatt Keith right Wyatt up the Keith middle. A little bit of a burst there, but again, Frontier was able to close that hole pretty quickly, but he did bring the ball out to around the 34, 35 yard shot. line. Second five, down at about five. Yeah, his best run of the night. He had four, uh, three carries on that first drive for seven yards, so 12 yards now on four carries. And oh yeah, about a second and five here for Turner's Falls. Yeah, ball just inside their own 35 yard line with Frontier leading by a score of seven to nothing. They go back to Keith again. He'll try the left side. Frontier though strings it out. And they bring him down for maybe a gain of a yard up to the 35. It'll be third down and five from there. Well, exactly what we expected to start the game. A huge dose of Wyatt Keith again approaching 1,000 yards on the season. They're going to give him a yard on that carry, so 13 yards now for him. I believe he was 24 yard shy of 1,000. Well, it, I, uh, let me see. Right? I've written that down here. Was it 35 coming in? Uh, let's see here. At, uh, 962 was what they, the recorder had him at. 962. Yeah, so 28 away is what they were thinking. I'm not quite sold on that number though. Play action pass, Dodge, high pass well over the head of the intended receiver down there. And it now will be fourth down and five. Yeah, so interesting play call here. You would assume Chris the point, not a huge gambler in most cases. We'll think about punting this away and again, trying to pin Frontier a little deep. Wyatt Keith did not have a good punt his first try. Again, it went kind of straight up in the air and flopped around there for a while and ended up taking a backwards kick when it hit the ground back towards Turner's fall. So. It looks like they are going to line him up to punt the ball away here again, though, on fourth and five, fourth about four. Edo McMillan will go back to his own 35-yard line. Here comes the snap to Keith. Boots away a much better kick this time. And this likely will not get a frontier return. Well, this is the opposite of what happened the yeah, first that was time. A, that was a great kick. It was a good kick and a good roll down to the 27-yard line of frontier. So they flipped the field. Now we'll see if Frontier can get another great drive going or if uh, Turner's Falls can stop them this time. Uh, again, that's good faith in Wyatt Keith after that first punt. Try to make a decision there. Do you go on fourth and four that, in that field position or do you punt it away? Give Keith another shot and he does his job there very well. So yeah, now Frontier, long field to go here. Be first and 10 at their own. It's about the 27 yard line looks like. 154 to play here in the opening quarter. Frontier leading seven to nothing on a one yard touchdown run by Garrett DeForest. And the conversion kick by Matt Hildreth. Hildreth is under center right now. This is the traditional frontier alignment on offense. And on first down, it's Garrett DeForest getting some tough yards. He brings it into 
the linebacking crew of Frontier, of uh, Turner's Falls, rather. They give them a yard of about two. Comiskey on the stop. It'll uh, be second down and nine. Yeah, seven, and nine. seven carries now for Garrett, 44 yards on the ground. Eric Kirkendall, uh, Alec Kirkendall's got a couple of carries for 11 yards here in the first half as well. Again, Matt Hildreth with that one. Uh, excuse me, what is DeForest that completed the pass? One of one passing for the 15 yarder in the first down in that first quarter. Freeman, the tight end on the left side. Blight, the tight end on the right side. Three receivers in the backfield. DeForest comes emotional, he'll take it on a sweep left, looks to turn the corner. Here Unable to do so, but did bring the ball out across the 30 yard line. It'll be a doable third down. Let's see, they're going to spot him back a little bit. Third down, we'll call it probably about four or five here. Nice job by Kyle Dodge on the tackle there. Again, he was blocked. He was able to spin back to the outside, and that's where Garrett DeForest had chosen to run. So a nice play to get to the man after being blocked and making a pretty decent tackle right there or else yeah he would have been streaking down the left side and still be running. All right so a big uh, defensive play here for Turner's Falls as Frontier basically went pretty much right down the field on that last drive before they poked it in. Frontier would love to send them out three and out. See what they can do now. Third down and four from the 34 yard line. Hildreth back to pass, airs it up, throwing downfield, caught by McMillan, brings it down and takes off left side. Into the Turner secondary, pushed out of bounds at the Turner's 30-yard line. First down and 10 for the Redhawks. Well, if it weren't for he, Andy Craver, he'd be in the end zone right now. What a great throw, what a great catch, and then he emerged from the pile. And it was all by himself. Craver had the right angle, and he was able to knock him out. He'd be in the end zone celebrating right now. Great throw, great catch, big game for Frontier. Well, some dummy play-by-play -play guy about a half an hour ago on the pregame show was talking about the fact that Frontier may not be quite as diverse offensively as Turner's Falls. I don't remember who that was. <laughs> and the handoff now to Kirkendall. Alec, Kirkendall Alec will take Kirkendall. it on the right side. Again, he's a lot to bring down. He brings the ball down to the Turner's Falls 30-yard line. It's a gain of about three or four there, second down coming up. Now, each quarterback has completed a pass. Matt Hildreth is now one of one, as was Garrett DeForest out of the Wildcat. And now we're going to run down out of the last two seconds, and that will be the end of the first quarter. End of one here in South Deerfield, and our score on the conquest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It's the Frontier Red Hawks 7, the Turner's Falls Thunder nothing. And back after this on Bear Country, 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Daniel Gray is Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ service, voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Second quarter begins with Frontier with the ball. They turn us falls 30, second down and seven, and they're going to go to Edo McMillan. Edo McMillan Nothing doing. He ran right into the heart of the Turner's Falls D. Anthony Peterson, on a stop Anthony the Peterson number 81, on the stop after a gain of one yard down to the 29 yard line. Third down at about six from there. Looked like he was gobbling up a rebound, didn't he? Went up, <laughs> grabbed him, and took him back down to the ground. Can't wait to watch that kid play some ball here in the. Winter time. That's right. Plays center for Gary Mullins and Turner's Falls basketball. He's the son of former Turner's Falls football player Eric Peterson. Right, Handout play. now goes to Ida McMillan. Got the first down, carry. but a flag just off the snap. Yeah. Not sure this one's going to hold. I think that's going to come back, and it'll be the third penalty against the Red Hawks. It would have gone for a first down inside the uh, right around the 20-yard line of Turner's. Well, now the officials are discussing it. And what do we have? Uh, Mm. The flag off the snap uh, there. Offside turners, and that penalty will be declined, obviously. They'll take the result of the play. 
It'll be first down, <coughs> excuse me, first down and 10 for Frontier at the Turner 20. Usually when the flag comes right off the snap like that, it's against the offense. In this case, it was against Turner's fall, so. It'll be when it's off sides, they usually whistle the play dead right there. Right, that's kind of uh, what I was thinking, or illegal yeah. formation, the kind of thing, but. In this case, it was against Turner's Vol. So it's both teams penalized twice for 10 yards so far in this game. 10-10 to play here in the first half. Frontier seven. Turner's Falls nothing. The Hawks have it first and 10 on the Turner's Falls 20-yard line. E.O. McMillan on the right side. Cuts it back in, cuts it back to the outside. Still going, and he brings it down inside the Turner's Falls 10. An 11-yard gain to the nine. It'll be first and goal from there. Well, that'll erase the minus carry that he had on that bobble play there a while back. So four carries now for him. Just seven yards, but again, he had that one bad play where he lost a bunch of yards. And that's gonna be a first and goal now again for the Red Hawks. Frontier now trying to go up by two scores here in the first half. First down and goal from the nine. Hildreth calling the signals. Pitches a double handoff, they go to the forest, and Dodge comes up, but he breaks out of the tackle, but then Dodge's teammates come to finish him off. A loss of a yard or so, back to the 10, I believe. We'll see, well, maybe they'll mark him up a little bit. Yeah, they'll mark him up to the eight yard line, so it'll be second down and goal from there. That was that double handoff, Sean. Yeah, and they executed that pretty well, but Dodge came in and blew that up, didn't quite make the tackle, but hung on long enough. But DeForest was taken down by the next wave coming up to get him, and yeah, we'll call it it may be a gain of a half yard. I going to say, yeah, pretty much right back to where he started on that one. Ball's on the left side hash mark. Now they're going to go to that Wildcat formation. It's DeForest out of the shotgun. He's going to roll to the right, throws down towards the end zone. Touchdown! It goes to Corbin Dwight for the score, and Frontier now leads 13 to nothing. That's the second ball caught by Corbin Blight from, Matt, uh, from excuse me, Garrett DeForest. Again, Garrett DeForest has been used in the backfield all season long. They come up with his Wildcat last week and they're throwing it at Turner's Falls right now. Two of two passing is Garrett DeForest. He's got a touchdown pass as well, 24 yards. The Red Hawks are running the ball, they're throwing the ball, and now they're going to kick the ball for the extra point. And the conversion kick is up. Did he tuck it in? Yes, he did. The left up right, it's good. Tag out on the field. 8.51 to play here in the first half. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard, it's now Frontier 14. Turner's falls nothing. All right, Turner's facing some adversity. Let's see what they do. They've done nothing on offense. Nothing. All right, Frontier with Jacob Bryant has a teed up on the 40-yard line, booting it away again. Another line drive, ground ball goes to Keith at the 15, 20, 25, 30, across the 35 up to the 37-yard line, right up the middle. So Wyatt Keith sets him up fairly nicely. This is a big drive here for Turner's Falls. 8.46 to play here in the half. They trail now by two scores. They can't keep going three and out, Sean. Yeah, Keith looked good on that return, so maybe that'll get him going out of the backfield. Five carries, just 13 yards for Wyatt Keith. Again, he's not had a game under 100 yards yet this season. He's had three over 200-yard games out of the backfield. Out of the I formation is Wyatt Keith up the middle, and he's got a first down and more into the frontier secondary, into Red Hawk territory, down to the 46-yard line, first and 10 turners. Yeah, so 30 yards now real quick on that rip by Wyatt Keith. Again, the Greenfield quarter had him at 962 yards. So 38 yards he needs to get his thousand. He's at 30 right now. Again, I, I, first kid I know of to run for over a thousand yards at two different schools. Did it last year for Pioneer. That's right. They go to Wyatt Keith. Oh, he got popped in the backfield. DeForest came through unblocked, and he hit Wyatt. That'll go for no gain. Yeah, right back to the line of scrimmage. So yeah, a couple of. Uh, Exciting things happening out of the backfields in Greenfield. R.J. Bird, he's shooting for his third consecutive thousand-yard season. And oh, they did. They did mark him back for a loss of a yard. Yeah, a loss there. Yeah, back to the 48-yard line, so it'll be second down at 11 from there. R.J. Bird, uh, with a little luck and a little health, he'll get his thousand-yard season for the third year in a row. And White Keith here again. Last year ran for a thousand yards at Pioneer. Getting real close to doing it here for Turner's. We're gonna go shotgun here. Trips left for Turner's Falls on second down and long. Dodge back to pass, flushed out of the pocket, takes off on the left side, steps out of a tackle, looking for some blocking. And he makes a nice gain down to the Red Hawk 40-yard line, shy of the first down. 
everyone covered downfield. Uh, and again, you know, they, they don't have a lot of running plays where they use Kyle Dodge to, specifically to run the ball, but he's got that escapability and he can make some big gains. He did certainly there, call that about seven yards. So a more manageable third down here for Turner's balls at the Mohawk, excuse me, the Frontier 40 yard line. And, he got to get about five, almost six yards for the first down here. Well, when Kyle gets out of the pocket and then runs and then does that little duck move, that's right out of uh, those of us who are a little bit older, that's right out of Doug Flutie's playbook. Yep. He reminds me a lot of Flutie when he's Ducks. scrambling. Yep. Makes plays happen. He's back to pass a straight drop, sets up, throws it deep down the got middle. Him. He's got his man. Oh, just overthrew him. It would have gone potentially for six pass. had he caught him in stride. Who was that down there? Whitey was Craver. That's Craver, yeah. number five. Yeah, yeah. he just mistimed his leap slightly. I think if he had just taken one more step and then laid out for the ball, he'd have been much closer to it. But I think Dodge put it pretty much where he wanted to put it. That was a beautiful throw. Great throw, and uh, again, Craver's had a great season. Just one more step, and he'd have been close to the end zone. Instead, now it's going to be fourth and five for Turner's. And, and the ball's at the 41 yard line. Yeah. Usually it's four down territory. It's a makeable five yards. They're already down by two scores. Well, that's the thing, too. You got you to gotta, you gotta yeah. hold the ball. You're going to score some points. So I would assume you go here. They're lined up to go. Three receivers to the far side right. The lone back is Wyatt Keith on fourth down. Straight drop back. Throws over on the right side. It is caught. Did he drop Great it? Great catch. He caught Great it. Catch. First down. Who got that? That was Wallace. Jake Wallace. Jake Wallace, Wallace, one of the pioneer kids, brought that down. That's a big fourth down conversion. Wallace has had one catch in every single game. One for five yards against Mahar, one for four against McCann, a catch for three yards against Green. For that one there, a huge catch for the first down. I thought it popped out no. on the way down, the way he was uh, reacting, but a big catch. 6.44 to play in the half, and now they go first down. Carry to Wyatt Keith, right side, into the Frontier secondary. That'll go for a first down and that's going to bring them over a thousand yards for the season yeah, i do believe uh, absolutely from the 30 it looks like they're going to be down around the 10 down. yard line let's see where they mark them yeah it's a 20 yard gain right there for wyatt key so eight carries 59 yards for that young man in a thousand yard season his name's going to go on that banner uh, turner's falls in there hurry up they go right back to keith with a little pep in his step and he's a load to bring down brings it down right, close to the carry. five yard line of frontier Short of the first down, the first down marker is. Boy, they're going to put him right down here. Yeah, they're going to put him right down at that marker. Yeah, he's rolling now. 68 yards, nine carries for Keith. Second and about a yard, but they can get a first down just uh, inside the goal line, right outside the goal line. They go right back to Wyatt Keith up the middle, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown. Wyatt Keith. Turner's Falls is on the board. It is 14 to 6. Well, it didn't look good after that Kyle Dodge incompletion when he tried to hit Craver. But what a throw, and then what a catch by Jake Wallace. Chris LaPointe was telling me a couple weeks ago Wallace runs the best pass patterns out of any of them. Doesn't get a lot of looks, but boy, he made a big catch there for a first down, and then it was just Wyatt Keith into the end zone. 10 carries, 70 yards, a touchdown for him. 14-6 now. Turner's Falls, as you said, has a very dependable Tyler kicker in Tyler Lavin as well, so he will set up to kick the extra point. Snap back, Dodge puts it down. Lavin's kick is up. Pushes it to the right side, inside that right upright, and it's good. Five minutes, 53 seconds left to play here in the first half, and our score now on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelvin scoreboard. It's Frontier 14, Turner's Falls 7. Let's take a moment to recognize the cheerleaders from both teams. Nice job, ladies. So Turner's Falls is on the board, and it's a one-score well, game again. And we will see now if Keith two, and kicks four, deep. He usually three. does. When you're going up against a good offensive team, you kick it deep. But a lot of times they have gone for the onside, or they just kick it in that no man's land over that opening line of defenders. There's a line drive kick. It pops out of Hilger's hands. He picks it up. He'll take off up the middle. And he brings the ball outside the 30-yard line across the 35. It'll be first down and 10 for the Red Hawks, now leading by seven after that Wyatt Keith touchdown. Yeah, Turner's Falls really needed that, as you had mentioned. Uh, two straight drives, ending in scores for Frontier, a two-touchdown lead here just in the second quarter. Big touchdown, big drive there for the Indians, right for Turner's. And, uh, 5.45 to go here in the first half. Frontier has the ball up 7, 14-7. 37-yard line, first down and 10. Hildreth is the quarterback. They've run DeForest out of that shotgun formation a few times. And that up goes to Ido McMillan. 
And he brings it up to the 40-yard line, a quick gain of about two or three there, second down coming up for the Hawks. He said, you know, McMillan, the second leading rusher out of the backfield behind DeForest, 364 yards, has a touchdown on the season as well. Did miss one game, so just under 400 yards so far on the season for him. 5.22 to play here in the first half. 14-7 Frontier, the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report is coming up. We'll talk about this one. We'll talk about the other teams in action tonight. Greenfield trying to keep their winning ways going as they try to scratch out a playoff spot in D8. And we'll do our Patriot preview as well. Second down and long, Turner's Falls blew up that play, going nowhere again, that was McMillan. They've uh, trying to get Ito going on this particular drive. He's dropped for a loss back to the 40 yard line. So that's a loss of about a yard or two. It'll be third down and long now. Yeah, well, you gotta, you gotta hand it to the Green Wave. I mean, I thought after that Turner's game, their season was over. You know, they, they just, they were defeated badly and they looked like they'd been defeated badly. And boy, I didn't see them turning it around, but so far so good for the Green Wave. And they, yeah, they have to keep winning if uh, their postseason hopes are gonna stay alive. Third down and nine for Frontier. Ball spotted back just inside their own 40 yard line. And they go up the middle to the fullback. Nothing doing, a maybe a yard. Castine wrapped him up and whipped him right down, fourth down and long. And Frontier for the first time tonight will be forced to punt. Ryland Castine, 6'1", 280, he's a senior. And yeah, there was just no running by him right there. So what a great defender to get the touchdown. And now, Turns will get the ball back with just over, well, just under four minutes here. We're at 401 and counting right now. Clock is rolling. A big momentum shift right here. Hildreth is under center, but again, yeah. they're going to drop him back Matt to punt. Back to punt for the Hawks. Matt takes and the snap, back for boots it away, gets away a nice kick. Taken by Craver at his 32. Left sideline to the 40, cuts it back. Reverses great field. Blocks, great to blocks. the 40, to midfield. And takes it down to the Frontier 49-yard line. It'll go into the books of a return of about 18, 19 yards, but he ran closer to 50, 60 yards. It looked like he ran a marathon. He contracted on the thing there. He went back and forth and around, and uh, what a great return. What a great effort by him. And Turner Falls will set up shop about six yards from where Frontier needed to get to for their first down. So big play there for Turner's. Going to have a timeout on the field. Yeah, Frontier wants to talk about this here. Three and a half to go in the quarter, in the half. They want to stem the momentum, which Turner's Falls has seized, at least for now. We'll take a timeout. 344 to play here, 334 to play here in the first half. And on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard is Frontier 14, Turner's Falls 7. Really, really good timeout there by Frontier, Sean, as they were, you know, they had their first three and out. Turner's Falls got Wyatt Keith going on that last drive. They, you know, definitely a good time out there for the Hawks. And then a good return by Craver. So yeah, Turner's Falls sets up shop at the Frontier 49. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Good time to just sit down and think about what you're doing and just calm it down there a little bit. Backs out of the eye formation. Wyatt Keith right at the middle. A big gain into the Frontier secondary. He's going to bring it all the way down inside the 40-yard line to the Red Hawk 37. A gain of 12. It'll be first down and 10. Like he was shot out of a cannon right up the middle of the football field. He was untouched through the line. And as you said, a big gain or 12 yards. So the Frontier timeout didn't stem the tide. Didn't slow down Wyatt Keith at all. First yeah. play from the scrimmage, a first down. They had him bottled up in that first quarter. Not the case here. They go right back to Wyatt Keith. This time they are able to get a surge, but Wyatt keeps the legs going. It'll bring it from the 37. Let's see where they're going to bring him down. Right around the 30. Five yard line. We'll give them about three or four there. Kirkendall on the stop. It'll be second down. 12 carries now, 85 yards here in the first half for Wyatt Keith. Of course, he has the Turner's touchdown as well, 14 7 Frontier, but Turner's Falls looking for the equalizer here. Going to be second and about seven yards. Coming in motion now is Lavin. Pitch, left side goes to Keith. Wyatt looks to turn the corner, does so. Driven out of bounds inside the 30 yard line. We'll see how close he did get to that first down marker. Looks like he'll be just a little bit short. Third down and about two to come here with 2.34 to play here on the half. Yeah, he's gonna mark him up. Well, he almost got the first down. Oh, they are, yeah, they, I think they're gonna wave it up. Yeah, he got, he got the first down. So credit him with a couple extra yards there. 92 yards now on 13 carries. And of course, over 1,000 for the season. He did it last year as a junior at, front, at uh, Pioneer. Does it again as a senior here at Turner's Falls. Yeah, pretty amazing. 
Dodge with backs in the eye formation behind him. Two receivers to the far side right, right up the middle. It goes to Keith Kirkendall trying to hold on for dear life behind him, brings him down, but that's a quick gain of about four or five right there. Second, Second down coming up. Well, again, that's the thing about Wyatt Keith. Yeah, you know, he's 6'1", he's 190, but boy, is that kid athletic. And he can run by you through you. Uh, just a, a myriad of choices for him. He can step to the outside. He can run straight. I just uh, got a lot of skills for a running back. He's a big kid, and he's strong. And Again, sometimes the game always looks like it's going to go for a couple, and he's able to make it maximum right there. That's one of those drives, one of those carries. So second and five now here for Turner's. Have a scoreboard update from Greenfield, by the way. Back to pass, Dodge, rolling to the right side, looking downfield, running out of time, and gets away again. Takes off on the right side, still going. Dodge with that elusiveness that we talked about, and he got the first down. Frontier had him dead to rights, and he got away. Yeah, we talked about escapability, but that's Houdini levels right there. I mean, that kid was dead to rights. He should have never made it past the line of scrimmage. Boy, what a big play for Kyle Dodge. First down turns just outside the 10. Just outside the 10, which is where they were a moment ago, looking to get the equalizing score here. Again, they're going hurry up. They go right back to Wyatt Keith. He'll take it left side, breaking tackles, brings it down inside the 10. He's going to be spotted at around the 9. Down by number 68. Clock not really a factor right now. Minute 10 clock rolling. Turner's has four timeouts remaining. So he's now over 100 yards in the first half. Now the first down marker is uh, down right near the five yard line. So that's a gain of about five. Second down here. Clock under a minute now. 14-7 in favor of Frontier, but that could change right here. They go to Keith, left side, keeps the legs chugging down towards the goal line, got down the one, he got close. That'll go for a first down, though. It'll be first and goal from the one. They'll stop the clock with 45 seconds left to reset the chain here. Yeah, again, the clock not a factor at all. That was their second timeout. They have three more to use, and they're gonna take one right here. Turners will take the timeout, will take a timeout as well. 45.9 seconds left here in the first half. And our score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne Falls scoreboard, Frontier 14 and Turner's Falls 7. Back here in South Deerfield, Frontier comes out first down in goal for Turner's Falls at the Frontier three yard line as it's been first virtually goal, all Waikith except line. for that one scramble by Dodge that got him another first down. First quarter, uh, consecutive three and outs for this Turner's Falls offense, but they've been rolling these last couple of drives, looking to tie the game and Castine in now oh, at oh, fullback. Oh. Give him the ball. And they're Beat gonna him. give Beat it to him. Castine, and he is in no. for the touchdown. No, it wasn't Castine. Oh no, it was Keith. It was Keith behind Castine. Look at the way he handed it to Castine, the big guy. He just blew the hole open, and then Keith was able to fall in behind him. And Keith has scored. His second touchdown of the game, he has scored from one yard and now from three yards. It's 14-13, and now we're only a Tyler Lavin conversion kick away Boy, from getting right back after. where we started. That brought me back to the 85 Bears a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> With the fridge, Ooh, yeah. See that guy coming at you. All right, Lavin set to kick out of Dodge's hold. Snap back, placement down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. We got a ball game, Jeffrey. Yes, we do. 42 seconds left here in the first half on the car crest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. We are tied at 14. Back after this on Bear Country 95.3. No, no. All right, Wyatt Keith has it teed up on the 40 yard line. A no. very short. No, no, no. <laughs> we were speculating with Turner's fall since they're rolling offensively right now. Would they try to, uh, an onside? I say no. And try to get to the end zone and take a halftime lead. I think he kicks it deep. Oh, he tried it. And the ball is loose. Along the side goes out of bounds. Okay, they did take a shot at it. Again, once you top that ball, it gets bouncing around. You have a reasonable chance at can, uh, getting that uh, first start. Uh, well, get, getting, uh, getting possession. It was touched by a frontier player, so obviously normally a kick like that that goes out of bounds is a penalty, but you could see one of the frontier up men, actually kind of the middle, middle guy there, reached for his head, bounced over his head, got his arm on it. So going out of bounds, Frontier will take over exactly where that is, is at the 40, 35-yard uh, 35 line. 35 35-yard line. And we will see what they do. They're going to go with DeForest taking the snap. 
and he will roll to the right, looking to pass, zips it downfield, and overthrew his intended receiver, Blight, who kind of did a little bit of a square route after 15 yards. The ball was thrown 20 yards, now it'll be second and 10. Just the first incompletion for our Frontier quarterback tonight. DeForest was a perfect two for two through the air, and Hildreth was one for one before that pass. So being a little aggressive here from the 35-yard line, trying to get the ball downfield. 36 seconds left here in the first half. 14-14, Frontier scored the first two touchdowns. Wyatt Keith has scored the last two touchdowns. The conversion kicks have all been good. We said Greenfield needed to continue to win to hold on to any opportunity for the playoffs. Our friend Rob Charbonneau must be over there listening Charby. to us. And hey buddy, it's 22-6 Greenfield right now. 4-19 to go in the first half. Thank you, Sharby. Back to passes, Hildreth throws it back. They set up the a screen. screen to McMillan, but it's snuffed out by Turner's Falls. Leo McMillan. Well, that's why nobody a, runs the screen anymore. Only a gain of a couple. Well, when it's when it's properly executed and if the, if the opposing team doesn't realize what you're doing, they can go yeah. for big games. We've talked about it all season long. We don't see it a lot at the high school level anymore. Yeah, that one there will go for a gain of about one, but yeah, Turner sniffed that one out early. Yeah, Frontier's just going to let this run out. Eight yep. seconds left, and not even the huddle. And that'll do it. We'll Halftime here first, at, half Frontier here Regional. at Frontier Regional. Homecoming. It is senior Frontier night. Our score on the car the quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. Again, the Frontier 14, open. Turner's Frontier Falls 14, the, Regional, the Greenfield Savings Bank Frontier High School Band. Football Halftime Report coming up next on Bear Country 95.3. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Daniel Gray is Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ service, voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Welcome to the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. We're in South Deerfield, Frontier Regional. Frontier Red Hawks and the Turner's Falls Thunder tied at 14 at intermission. Jeff Terrell, Sean Huber here in the booth. Dave Reno is our studio producer. It was kind of a, kind of a tale of two different halves. Uh, first quarter decisively in Frontier's favor. Looked like potentially going to actually maybe blow out Turner's Falls here. Second quarter, all Turner's. Uh, Wyatt Keith had about 20, 30 yards there. And yeah, it wasn't looking good for Turner's. They weren't moving the ball at all on offense. And Frontier was doing what they do. But now they've mixed in a little bit of a passing game. That Wildcat has been effective for them tonight with DeForest uh, lining up the quarterback and chucking the ball a couple times. Big games for them there. And yeah, it was looking like, uh-oh, you know, Frontier up two scores with the ball. But Turner's Falls gets a three and out. They get a touchdown. They get the ball back. They get another touchdown. And, uh, now we've got the ball game. We thought we were going to have right off the bat, 14 14 here at the half. And again, we do want to congratulate Wyatt Keith going over a thousand yards on the season. We got a lot of football left to play. Consecutive thousand yard seasons. Again, as you mentioned, John is a junior last year at Pioneer, does it again as a Turner's Fall senior as part of the co op program. He is a load to, to bring down. He's, he's had a great year already, and as I said, a lot of football remaining to be played. Yeah, he'll be the first uh, rusher in the valley to have a thousand yards. This is early, and uh, again, three 200 yard plus performances will help you with that. Let's take a look at exactly what he's done. Yeah, again, week one against Lee, 107 yards. That was his lowest output for the season so far. He followed it up with 33 carries and 216 yards and a touchdown against Athol. Big effort against Greenfield, 30 carries, 239 yards. Scored three times in that one. A McCann, 19 carries, 127 yards and a score. 
Last week, Mahar, 20, 32 carries, 216, and two touchdowns for him. And now he's got it rolling again, 111 yards, two touchdowns in the first half against the Redhawks. He didn't seem to have an answer for him in that second quarter. <laughs> Not really. We'll see what happens. It's a, it's a game of adjustments, but the best games that we do, Sean, are when we get two talented teams and when there's a lot of shifts in momentum. That's the perfect scenario. The perfect scenario will be is if we come down to one minute to remain and we don't know who's going to win the football game. But we're, we're halfway there. We're halfway to a classic game. I mean, right now, yes, absolutely. Uh, again, we were kind of looking at each other when Frontier scored their second touchdown because the offense for Turners just did not look good at all. But. Uh, 14 to nothing, and they had the ball. So yeah, another score there, and you're thinking, oh boy, is it, you're gonna look at a 21 nothing game, and uh, not what we expected at all. Well, that's not what we got. Again, Turner's Falls comes back with a couple the of scores there in the second quarter, mostly on the legs of Wyatt Keith. Dodge only threw the ball three times in that first half. He completed one of three for eight yards. So again, the passing game, he ran the ball well, and he scrambled a couple of times, made big plays. Uh, so a little bit the on the ground for him, 18 Emily yards on a lost. pair of carries. But yeah, it was really all Wyatt Keith there. Wallace had the one catch for eight yards, and. The offense went through Wyatt Keith. 14-14 is our score here at halftime. The Frontier Regional Marching Band on the field entertaining the crowd here on Senior Night. We'll take a timeout here. We'll come back. We'll check in with some of the other teams in action tonight, including Next Greenfield, senior, Franklin County Tech, Caroline Mohawk, Moore. and more. They play tomorrow. And our Patriots preview, big game Sunday night against the Chiefs. We'll talk about it here on Bear Country 95.3. Next we have Sebastian Richards. Next senior is Kaylin Evans. And the final senior tonight is Aaron Hallback. Congratulations to the senior members of Red Hawk Band and good luck. selections tonight from the Frontier Band. The first will be the Jackson 5 Ballad, I'll Be There. And they're going to close with one of the greatest views from all of Motown, ABC. Once again, congratulations to the seniors. the Greenfield Savings Bank High School Football Halftime Report. One of the other, half, uh, one of the other uh, game updates we have is the Greenfield Greenway playing at home against Marlboro. They're all a big home favorite. They are winning right now 28 to six. And you were mentioning, and once again, thanks to Rob Charbonneau getting us the information. Uh, RJ Bird, a, a very different kind of runner, really, than Wyatt Keith, but uh, yeah. equally effective. He's having a heck of a night so far. Yeah, it sounds like uh, he's got three touchdowns, including one 95-yard touchdown run. Now. He had 745 yards coming into this game. So he needed 255 for his thousand. Boy, I'll tell you what, if he's got a 95 yard. <laughs> he may be on his uh, way. He may be on his way to getting his thousand the same night uh, that White he got his here in the first half. So yeah, Greenfield rolling over there. And also have an update from the uh, the Bear Country football pick 'em. I'm still beating Kevin. Okay. <laughs> That's the only update anybody else has to hear. <laughs> 
That's all. There. <laughs> that was brilliant. Uh, okay, well, let's talk about the Patriots. Uh, Sunday night, I tell you what, I have the perfect scenario uh, for, for New England sports fans. You got the Patriots and the Chiefs on Sunday night football. That game will be heard on Bear Country 95.3. We'll uh, start the pregame, I, I think, at 5.30. And the kickoff will be at 8.20. So have your TV set up for game two of the ALCS, Sox and Astros from Fenway. Have the radio on Bear Country, and we got to cover it. A lot going on. A lot Either way. On. Red yeah, Sox going to be fun. Big, big night for New England sports. Big weekend for New England sports. Let's talk about that, uh, the Pats Chiefs game. Pat, Chiefs, hey, you know, got to give them credit. 5-0. and oh. Are they really a 5-0 and oh team? I would debate anyone on that. I don't think they're really a 5-0 and oh team. I will give them credit. They're off to a great start offensively. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback, is doing otherworldly things. We'll see if they can do it at Gillette on Sunday night. No, well, again, it's uh, we're getting into the time of the season where the Patriots don't tend to falter very much at all. And you look at the tough games at home, and very rarely do they lose a tough game at home mid-season and beyond. You know, uh, they're going to lose a couple of games every year. It seems like they're going to be two and two now. And it's just how the, the beginning of their year starts. But once they figure their stuff out, they're tough. And again, at home. I'm a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. I mean, Mahomes has been great. They've got so many weapons. Uh, boy, I, 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 I'm a little scared. I'm a little scared, not going to lie. I'm not for some reason. Right. I, I think it's going to be a good game, but I do have the Patriots winning at home and uh, going down two games over the 500 mark. Uh, but yeah, we'll have all the action for you right here on Bear Country. Pre-game at 5.30 and the kickoff at 8.20 right here on 95.3 WPBQ. We'll take another time out here on our halftime report. We'll come back, get you set for the start of the second half. Turner's Falls, big second quarter. Two touchdowns, they've tied the game at 14. Back after this here on Bear Country 95.3. Again, tonight's winning 50-50, 905-2060, what's the price here at the press box? South Deerfield Frontier Regional game of the year in the Intercounty League North Division. The two top teams in terms of the league record, 3-0 Turner's Falls, 3-0 Frontier, all Frontier early on. They led by a score of 14 to nothing. They scored on a one-yard run by uh, Garrett DeForest, Matt Hildreth, the conversion kick, and then DeForest to Corbin Boyd from nine yards. Hildreth's conversion kick made it 14 to nothing late in, uh, that was actually uh, early in the second quarter, but then the rest of the half, it was all Turner's Falls. A couple of touchdown runs by Wyatt Keith. Conversion kicks by Lavin. We're right back where we started, Hubie. Well, again, talking about the two uh, kickers, very dependable, and both of those guys did their job twice in a tight game. Uh, very important, again, tied at 14. The extra point, so important, you don't realize until you look back, and if you missed one, cost you a game but both of those guys were true on all four of their kicks so yeah 14 14 frontiers first quarter turners in the second looking forward to this second half coming up tomorrow here on bear country 95.3 we have a football game from dalton massachusetts as we're going to be at wakona regional i'm really eager to see that wakona warriors team uh, they are one of the uh, top teams in western mass division seven which is the same division that Frontier is in. They, these two teams, they faced each other in the postseason. Yeah, you know, I know you were out, I was out 
We had uh, Chris Collins and Bobby C doing that broadcast, and you know, Frontier was willing. Uh, they just weren't able to contain the Warriors. They run a great football program out there, and they are a decided home favorite against the Northampton Blue Devils, a team that we used to cover uh, quite regularly earlier uh, this century. It seems like it was a long time ago. It does. But we did Northampton Blue Devil football all the time when the games were on our sister station, WHMP. So we got our chance to do uh, some Northampton Blue Devil football, but again, a tough chore against the uh, a team that's just a football power out of the Berkshires out of uh, Wakona. Well, another place I don't think we've ever done a ball game from. I don't think we've never ever been, been to Wakona. Ne never we? been to Wakona. So, I've been to Dalton plenty of times, yeah. but I've never done a game at Wakona. Yeah, so uh, we'll have to go back. Sometime we'll sit back and look at how many different places we've been, but this will be a, a new place. It'll be exciting. It'll be a good ball game. Uh, Blue Devils need that win as well. So Yeah, they're, they're uh, hanging on in their own division, uh, Division 4 Western Mass. So that's a big, big game for them. But again, a tough chore. Okay, so we are set now. They're actually whistling to get Frontier on the field. We'll get set for the second half kickoff here. We are tied at 14. Again, the winner of this game will definitely have the inside track. No one can clinch anything, by the way, because these teams don't have two more league games beyond tonight. However, let's be honest. The winner of this game pretty much will win the league championship, the Intercounty League North, which went to Frontier last year. You would think so. East Hampton is lurking just behind these two, and both of these teams play East Hampton over the next couple of weeks. So don't count East Hampton out quite yet, but. Yeah, that was a big loss for East Hampton against Greenfield. Yeah. And if you're wondering about Greenfield, they're on the outside looking in. They really can't worry about a league championship because they have two league losses. They've lost to the Turners. They've lost to the Frontier. Really, what they want to do is try to make it in to that Division Eight playoff field. All right, Brian has a teed up for Frontier. Kick it off, it's a line drive, and it's going to go to Keith at the 15-yard line, right up the middle. Across the 35 to the 38 yard line, wow, still going. going, and he's going to bring it to the 40 yard line. He got those last four or five yards all on his own with about four or five guys on his back. Oh, yeah, yeah. Looked like they were going to have him right there at the 35. First and 10, Turner Boy, falls. Oh, he's just getting moving. Big boys, too, and he dragged him with him another five yards, as you said. So, what was Wyatt's yardage in that first half, by the way? 111. 111 in the first half. Yep. Okay, so he's had three 200 yard games, and He's trending for over two bills again here. Absolutely. We'll see if he can do it again. Frontier did a great job. Those first two drives, they held him pretty much in check. High formation behind Dodge, two receivers to the far side right. Wyatt Keith up the middle. Big game into the second oh! Just a trick a He would have been gone potentially for a score, but he Good rips line up line the for the Hawks. first down in the Jackson Frontier yeah, territory. Yeah, give a game of 16 and again, just right up the middle of the gun. First first and ten, boy, yeah, that one last arm tackle tripped up his feet, otherwise he would have been gone. Yard line. He's dead a big 16 yard gain on first down for Wyatt Keith. Ball is spotted now inside of Frontier territory. Ball is at the 44 yard line. Right back to Keith. He'll try the left side. Frontier though. Oh, oh, just a short oh, game. Oh, no. The ball popped loose, but he Take was down. Play. It'll go for a gain of maybe one. Now, second Hildreth down and one. Yeah, you can see Hildreth was holding him up and they took a pretty good shot in the side he there by one of the linebackers coming up. And the ball did come out, but I do not believe it was fumbled. I believe he was down. Second down and long. We'll see how Turner's Falls runs. I mean, you got Keith, you can just keep running him, but eventually this sets up a perfect yep. opportunity for the play action. Again, Dodge is very good at that. Lavin comes in motion. He'll take it on a sweep. Cutting to the outside, tripped up. Nice open field tackle by Garrett DeForest. Third down and long. Yeah, yeah, down ten, two carries out of the backfield this year. Not a lot of success on the season in there. Just couldn't get to the outside, so they did not feed it again to Keith. Instead, they get to Lavin as he's coming back through the formation. And good tackle there by Frontier. No gain really on the play. We'll call it third and ten. About third and nine, I guess, to move them up a little bit. Backs are split. Lavin and Keith behind the quarterback dodge. They usually pass out of this. Play action. He rolls to the left. Steps up. Delivers it down the middle. Incomplete. Pass and four. fourth down. Couple of receivers kind of in the area, but it wasn't near the way. No, complete. Dodge had heavy Another pressure easy. coming Thunder right out. As a matter of fact, as he released that nine. ball, his arm got hit. It did not affect the flight of the ball. He was able to get it away, but I think he just had to get it out of there a split second earlier than he wanted to. And that's going to bring up a fourth down now for Turners. And we'll see what Chris LaPointe does here. It is in frontier territory at the 45 yard line. They will drop the punt for the Thunder. back in punt formation, try to win the battle of field position here. The Red Hawks. 
Snap goes back to Wyatt. Here comes Frontier, gets it away. A line drive kick. Edo McMillan chased down to his five. He's going to let it roll towards the end zone, and it makes it into the end zone. That'll bring the ball back out to the 20-yard line. He nearly well, got that to die down high. inside the five. It was a really good kick, and McMillan actually was smart. He kind of maybe sat that thing and made sure it was going to roll into the end zone, and it did. But very close to putting Frontier right at their own one or two yard line with that kick was Wyatt Keith instead will come out to the 20 for their first and 10. All right, so Frontier with a great first quarter performance offensively into the second, then they got bottled up. They went three and out and then uh, basically went three and out just before halftime. We'll see what they do here on first down and 10 from their own 20 yard line. We're tied at 14, 906 to play here in the third quarter out of the shotgun formation. Handoff up the middle, Alec Kirkendall brings it Alec up the gut. On the carry. Nice gain up close to the, well, bring him down around the 22, 23 yard line. Gain, two, six, gain of three yards there, it'll be second down and seven. Three carries in the first half for Kirkendall at 11 yards, so 14 yards now on a handful of carries for Alec. And it has turned cold. It'll be colder tomorrow night in the Berkshires. The, uh, the low tonight is supposed to be low 40s, I think. Yeah. And tomorrow night is supposed to get into the 30s. Coming in motion. This is out of the Wildcat formation. And up the middle. That is Garrett McCullough. He got it right near the first down marker at the 30, and they will give him the first down. Frontier shot, they needed that first down badly after that second quarter performance. Needed it badly, and the times that they ran the Wildcat formation, we saw him throw the ball almost every time. This time they ran the ball with DeForest out of that formation. And oh, look at Garrett. Oh, no, he's, that's not good for them. Yeah, he's limping around. He's got to come off. He looks like oh. he's nursing a couple of injuries. Yeah. He's coming up. Arm. It looks like his arm and his leg. He's yeah. limping, and he's holding his shoulder yeah. in kind of a funny way. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Look. And he's their top offensive yeah. weapon for sure. He's heading to the bench. We'll keep an eye on on this and but yeah boy yeah he's holding his shoulder arm and he's also uh, limping bad. Bill Dreth that quarterback gives to Kirkendall up the middle and he brings it for a gain of two yards from the 30 to the 32 will be second down and eight they're going to try to get him squared away here at the yeah he's just kind of taking a break he's talking to a trainer but he looks like he's going to be okay but he did get dinged up on that last play yeah they're not looking at anything in particular right now but he at the looked really there. messed up coming off he the field really did, did. no again it looked like he was favoring a shoulder or an elbow in his leg and you could tell he was just not walking right and the last time i saw number 10 come off the field down here like that it was uh zach yeah. bardick boy he took a pounding that night <laughs> double handoff goes to josh samansky but turner's josh falls samansky great for the carries. Castine brings him down for a loss, loss back to the original line of scrimmage. Actually, a loss of uh, beyond that. They're going to mark him back up to the 30, so it'll be third down and about 10 from there, and DeForest comes back into the game. Yeah, Samansky's first carry right there, going to lose four yards. And, you know, when your lineman's standing there with his hands up in the air and you're getting knocked back three yards, you know somebody didn't block right. And that's exactly what happened there. Third and long now, third and 11 for the Hawks. There you go, shotgun with Hildreth. Matt takes a snap. He will roll to the right, looking downfield. Turner's falls closing in on him. Loops the pass, looking for it. DeForest tipped away. Garrett was there, but also two different defenders there as well. Wallace was one of them. And Anthony Peterson was bearing down on him as well. And again, we talked about a kid 6'3", basketball player. He had his arms up. I don't know how uh, Hildreth even got the ball through his arms. Barely did. Almost caught, almost line. bobbled, almost caught by another guy, but falls incomplete. So now on fourth down, you would assume the Hawks are gonna punt. Craver will drop deep for Turners. Craver standing at his own 40 yard line. Hildreth will drop, the drop the back into the formation. Snap goes back, boots it away. Takes a nice kick. It's going to roll Craver back along that sideline. Craver Denver. will pick it up at the last minute at his own 30 yard line. Tiptoes along the sideline, then got hit from behind. Craver. A return of about That's seven or eight yards. The first down and ten for Frontier. Uh, for Turner's Falls, rather, on the their Turners. own 38-yard line. We have 6.25 to play here in the third line. quarter. Turner's and Frontier tied at 14. Now, Kramer did a nice job there, though, just to see where that ball was coming, decide if it was going to go out of bounds, and then looked up to see where the coverage was, decided to field it. He got about five or six yards after that. 35, 36, 38-yard line here for Turner's. First and ten. They did get a first down on their first drive of the second half, but then 
were held on downs. We go Hawaii Key. Hawaii Key, right Terry. Side. He has the first down. Right sideline still going into Inside the 40 yard line, down to the 30 yard line. Into that whole territory. Turner falls first down. First down. And another big run by Key, 24 yards. Let me see, look at my advocates here. The 8 here, the 2 8 4, and it's 2 there, 5. 152 yards right now in the third Turners. quarter. 20 carries for Wyatt Key. 37 yards. And you got Turner's Falls going, hurry up. Right back to Keith, up the middle, breaks the tackle, cuts to the outside, Hildreth wraps him up. Keith on the carry, But he still did bring the ball down to the 35 yard line. The the 38. Second down coming up, 5.53 to play here in the third. We're tied at 14. Okay, Three, one second and seven. Plays where it just doesn't look like it's going to go for an awful lot. He still ends up getting a couple yards out of that. He was bottled up pretty well. Could get a two. Backs are split this time behind. Sometimes this is a passing down. No, they go to Keith. It cuts to the outside, wrapped up from right, behind. Right down before the first down. Right, he can bring it from the the front here. Down to around the 37-yard line or so. We'll give him three. Third down and four, four, four from the there for the Thunder. We talked about some of the epic performances by Keith already this season. 239 yards against Greenfield at 216 yards twice, both against Athol and Mahar. 157 yards right now with a quarter and a half to play for Wyatt Keith. All right, big third down call here as the quarterback, Dodge, Kyle Dodge, joins the huddle. He was just talking to his head coach here. They'll come out in the I formation with two receivers to the far side right on third down for Turners. Play action, Dodge has a man open. Yeah. First down, Turner's fall. Good for the catch. I think Thunder, first first catch of the season last week, a 20-yarder against Mahar. He was wide open, wide and Dodge open. delivered it. Yep, beautifully thrown. Just a second completed pass by Dodge. First and goal first from and goal. the 10-yard line. Turner's Fall is looking to take their first the lead of line. the night. They go to Keith on the left side, inside the five, still going down still towards going. the end zone. Wide down Keith. to the one, a gain of nine. Down. And he stopped Should just outside line. the goal line, nearly at his third touchdown of the evening. Yeah, who's going to carry the ball this week? Tackled by Andrew Logan. Go right back to him I'd again. go number Second 11 again. Now for I'd, I'd go number, I'd, I'd go double ones right here. Had three touchdowns in that Greenfield game. That's been his high water mark. Had two against Mahar. Single touchdown against Athol and McCann this season. Only game he was held scoreless was the week one loss to, to Lee. Second and goal. They actually say it's on the two yard line. I formation, Lavin and Keith. It's Keith up the middle, touchdown. Oh, Keith the end zone. Turner's Falls has taken the lead. It's 20 to 14. Look at the numbers. 24 carries, 168 yards, three touchdowns for Wyatt Keith. That's just not fair. Wow. <laughs> we have a lot of football left to go in this one. Four yeah. minutes to play third quarter. Turner's Falls down 14 at one point in this one. Has just scored to take the lead. They're up six. We assume they will get the extra Tyler point with Tyler the point after for most of the time this Turner's. season, and most of the time he's true. Kyle Dodge will hold for Tyler Lavin. Snap back, placement down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. 21 on answer points for Turner's Falls. Big Bull leads it now, 21-14 on the part rest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Joe on the scoreboard. They'll kick it off when we come back on Deer Country, that is 5 one 3 Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Daniel Gray is Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ service, voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Wow. Keith making a bid for a player of the game t-shirt. We'll talk about that in a bit here as we go along here in the second half. Three touchdown runs. Three conversion kicks by Tyler Lavin. 21 unanswered points for Turner's. They now lead by seven with 3.54 to play here. And 168 yards. So he's getting close to 200 yards plus for a fourth time in the 2018 season. And we're in mid-October, folks. It's a hell of a year. It really is. 
Boots it away, high end over end. McMillan takes it from his own 10. 15, center of the field, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. You know, McMillan on the third That's a 40-yard return from his own five. McMillan brings the ball to the third and half. 45-yard line, the frontier takes over first and 10. Dodge along with him for the last five or 10 yards. Jakey. Sophomore, 5'9", 145 pounds. McMillan, not that much bigger, but he had the momentum, and Jake was hanging on for dear life. I have to tell you something. You, I, I called him Jakey earlier. You just called him Jakey. When Kyle is graduating and Jake steps up and plays a more prominent role, we, we got to get rid of that. He's yeah. going gonna to be Jake. You'll have to, I guess. Just yeah, Jake. No, yeah. no more Jake. Yeah, because he's going to be his little brother anymore. That's yeah, right. I get that. All right, we'll go with that. Direct snap goes to Matt Hildreth. He'll take it across the right side. And takes it the into Turner's Falls territory down to the Turner's 48 yard line. That's a game Jake of Wallace about on the seven. They'll be second Six down and three. Second and four Frontier really just needs to settle down right now and just get into their offense, run it like they have all season long. Although Garrett DeForest looked kind of banged up. I'm not sure how much we'll see him carry the ball. He'll tough it out, but boy, he didn't look good. Three, receiver, three receivers to the near side right. Snap is taken by Hildreth. He'll try the left side. Not going to make it back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, a flag yeah, comes play. in at the very uh, end of the play. That might be, be a face mask. I think it's a personal foul. Yeah, I, uh, that might be a late hit. You saw uh, well, another Oh, they're going to pick it up. They're going to pick flag it up. I didn't see a face mask. I saw somebody play. came in late, but maybe they were feeling like he got pushed or it was incidental as he fell. Well, I saw one official reach with his hand up towards his face. That's okay. why I thought, you know, it was an area that we couldn't see third because down, of the angle that maybe it was a face mask. But instead, we will call it actually no gain. Third down and four now here. Turner's also would love to see Frontier go three and out and get that ball right back. Could have been a mosquito. Could have swatted a mosquito, that guy. <laughs> yeah, could, could be. A little chilly for that. But yeah, right. Shotgun formation, Hildra. We'll take the snap. He'll take it on the left side. Got Stumbles it. forward. Got the first down. Big first down Man conversion. Carry for a red hot first down. The drive will continue. Yeah, Look as though Charles would have to get him. after a game of just a couple, but no, he was able to squirt through and plenty of room to get the first down there over the 45. Down to the Turner's 44. So, yeah, if Frontier ever needed an answer, right now is the time. 21-14 Turners after being down by 14 in the first half, first quarter. Yeah, they did not want to go three and out there. Ball and no. off. There it goes. Who was Kirkendall? It was Kirkendall. Uh, no, actually, yeah, it was Alec Kirkendall. He got hit in the backfield and actually made a two yard gain out of it. Well, it Sucked down yeah, hard. Yep. It'll be second down and eight. Two yeah, yards, nice job by him. Yeah, they, they definitely uh, popped him in the backfield. He was able to bounce off of that. He had a gain of a couple on it. Second and eight, ball on the 42-yard line. We're down to the two-minute mark here in the third quarter. Turner's Falls 21, Frontier 14. Greenfield winning big as expected at home so far. We're tracking R.J. Bird as well. High snap, Hildreth fakes it, takes it to the right side, looks to turn the corner, does so. Great fix. Hildreth on a carry, knocked out well. Frontier first down, and Frontier has it. Jaden Whitey, carry goes for another red hot first down. A beat on him. They were able to get to where he wanted to go, but he got there faster. So yeah, he had a well executed play, a good the run turners. by the quarterback, and another first down on the drive. Line. So the Red Hawks have it going here. A minute 45 to play here in the third quarter. Turners 21, Frontier 14. It was 14 nothing Frontier early second. All Turners since then. Frontier trying to fight back now. They go to Kirkendall. As on the right side, still oh, going. Big like guy keeps the pile moving forward inside the Turner's Falls 35 yard line. Inside the 25, rather. And a nine yard gain in the first quarter. Well, and they're going to give him about Jacob five there. So 23 stop. yards right now on eight carries Carry for Alec Kirkendall. Five yards. Second and five. Second down and five. Ball is spotted at the 27 yard line. Here we go, shotgun. Hildra, Kirkendall to his left. Takes the hit, he'll take it himself on the left side. And he is close to the first down again, right near the 20 yard line, maybe just a little bit shy. We'll see where they put him down. It will be third down and short for the Hawks. Well, this is indicating to me that Garrett DeForest isn't right because we've not seen him handle the ball here on this drive at all. This is the most we've seen. Third and two for the Red ball. All season long, they really didn't have a lot of designed runs for him that we saw, and it's been all him on this drive. 
Third down and three. Ball right near the 25-yard line. Motion, and it looks like it be third down and much longer now. That's going to go against the Red Hawks. Start on the Red Hawks, five-yard penalty. It'll be it's going to be a motion, so it'll be third down and eight. eight. Yeah, third penalty against the Hawks, 15 yards. It's cost them. Turner's fall, two penalties for 10 yards. Ball back to the 30-yard line now, and that will definitely change the play call. In fact, Frontier, Frontier is going to call a timeout. We'll keep it here. This looks like it'll be a quick timeout. So, yeah, they had one play for third down and three. And now they have a di very different play that I guess they're going to go to on third down and eight. Well, and again, you're not seeing Garrett DeForest handling the ball here at all. You can see he was favoring his arm. He was, he was favoring a leg as he came off the field here on the last drive. And it's suspicious to me that he's not touching the ball right now. Really, it's just the quarterback with these draws and the Kirkendall runs. All right. They've rejoined the huddle now. Third down. They converted on third down last time. And I have to say at the 30-yard line of Turner's, this might be four down territory in a tight game. You would think, yeah. So they may have two third and eight here, potentially. Third and eight for the Hawks. The now in the center. Coming in motion is McMillie. He's back to pass on the right side. Throws downfield. It is caught by Freeman. First down at the Turner's Falls. Freeman, always a dependable receiver. His first catch of the night. And the ball down. Looks like the 15-yard line front. Uh, Turner's five, 10, 15. The Turner's ball's 15-yard line. And they're going to run uh, their hurry-up version of the offense. They go shotgun with Hildress. Direct snap. He'll take it himself on the right side. Brings it to the 11-yard line before he gets wrapped up there. It'll be second down. And yeah, that is the end stop. of the That's third the quarter. The quarter here on senior day. Get ready for what should be a thrilling score. fourth quarter here. The in the three. In South the Deerfield and our score on the car crest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Chapman scoreboard. It is Turner's Falls 21, Frontier 14. Support for FCAT's coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Daniel Gray is Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ service, go to best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. Set for the fourth quarter here. 11 minutes of football, maybe more. You never know you the know. way these teams have gone back and forth here. A lot of shifts in momentum, and now Frontier has seized some momentum. A couple of really big third down conversions in the third quarter, and they now have it set it up. Second down and five yards to go. The ball, let's see, inside the 10 yard line, just inside the 10. We'll see. No, it's right at the 10 yard line. They talked about the Turner's defense. They've allowed one score in each of the last three games. Kind of didn't think they'd hold Frontier to one score in this one. They've got two, and they're looking for a third. Hildreth out of the shotgun. Takes the snap. He'll take it himself on the left side. Cuts to the outside. Still going. Going for the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Matt Hildreth scores from 10 yards. It's 21-20. This is more of the offense I thought we would see out of Frontier this season. Again, we know the kid's an athlete. He's quick. He can run. And boy, he just didn't run a lot this year until today. Garrett DeForest looks like he's banged up. He didn't have a touch on that drive. It was all the quarterback Hildreth and a bunch of good runs by Alec Kirkendall. And a touchdown run by Hildreth. So they're one point away. This extra point from tying this thing up. Snap back, placement down. The kick is up. The kick is good. Time out on the field. 10:52 to play in this one. And our score: the Carquest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard: 21.
21, back after this. All right, Jacob Bryan kicking off for Frontier, topped it down the field, and it was jumped on by one of the Turner's Falls receiving men at the 35-yard line. First down and 10 for Turner's from there. Tied again at 21 as Frontier score there. Broke a 21-0 spur by Turner's Falls. Wyatt Keith will try Wyatt the Keith left side that stood up at the line of scrimmage, but did gain a couple of yards. And as he again is bearing yeah, down on 200 yards, it'll be second yards, down to Forrest on the tackle for Frontier. Yeah, let's see, give him a yard on that one. So 169 yards right now for Wyatt. Yeah, well, now they're going to mark him up a little bit. Okay, we're going to extra yard. Yeah, we'll give him two. 170. There we go. And the ball now spotted at the 37 yard line. Turner's moving left to right here on the fourth. We're tied at 21. We may need more than 44 minutes to settle this thing. They go to Keith, tripped up in the backfield as he gets it up to the 40 yard line, but it'll be third down as Frontier now defensively looking a little bit more energetic out there now. They were kind of hanging their heads a little bit. Yeah, well again, Keith was ripping them. So it was uh, now they're back to the first uh, couple drives where Turner's was really having a hard time running Keith. It was early going, it was not good. Frontier stopped him on their first two drives and Keith did not have many yards. Ball is at the 40 yard line, third down and five. The first down marker at the Turner's Falls 45. Keith is the lone back, double wide out to the other side. Now Lavin will come in motion. Play action pass, Dodge going downfield. That is caught, waiting for the first down up at the 47 yard line. There we go, first catch of the night for Jaden Whiting. He's a junior, 5'9", 150 pounds. And He's got some big balls this season for Turner's. Had two catches for 105 yards against McCann. Best game, three catches, 62 yards, and two scores against Athol. So Jaden Whiting, first time we've called his name tonight. Big throw and big catch for Turner's in a first down. Whiting will come to the near side right along with Craver. Backs are in the eye formation. Wyatt Keith on first down, tries the left side, and he brings it up to the midfield stripe into Frontier territory, down to the, around the 49-yard line. That's a gain of about three or four there, second down coming up. We have 9.03 left to play in the game in a 21-21 tie. Yeah, exactly what we had hoped we would see here, a good ball game between two good teams, a clean game, not too many penalties, not many mistakes. No, it's been very well played, very well played. Second down and six. Ball just inside of Frontier territory. I formation. Wyatt Keith right up the middle. Has the first down Wyatt down Keith to the 40 yard line of Frontier. It'll be first and 10 for first the Thunder. Yeah, he's Here's just got some in chunks right there. 186 10. yards now, 10, 20, 28 carries for Keith. Let's see, his season high total is 33 carries against Athol. Again, he had 216 yards and a score in that game. Yeah, we talked about it earlier this season when uh, when Coach LaPointe had Quinn Doyle running, he Boy. would he would load him up. Oh, 35, 38 Trent carries. Trent Borbo before him, remember 40 Trent? 40 carries a game, yeah. yeah. Wyatt Keith up the middle, stood up though at the line of scrimmage and driven back. That's going to go for maybe a gain a yard or two with the forward momentum. Yeah, they should mark him up here a little bit. Let's see where he'll he give him two up. yards yeah. from the to the 38 yard line. It'll be second down second at eight from nine. there. Well, a yard or two. It's right around that neighborhood. But again, the bottom line is he's scored three touchdowns tonight and is very close to eclipsing 200 yards again. Well, and he might be taking a shot at Rye 2K. You know, early in the yeah. season to be over a thousand yards. Back start split. And they go to Keith. He got tripped up in the backfield, leaned forward though with that tall frame of his, but a short gain. Very nice play there by Blight, number six. It'll be third down and long. Yeah, so big play here for this Turner's offense. Again, they just allowed the score to tie the ball game, putting together a pretty decent little drive here. Maybe four down territory. I don't know. 36, 37 yard line. The uh, ball's inside the 40. I yeah. think. I think in a tie game, you might want to pin them in deep. Yeah. Yeah. But oh boy, let's see what they do on this play. Well, let's see. Yeah. Dep it. Depends oh. on what it is for fourth down. Yeah. If they don't convert on third down here, if it's fourth and one, then yeah, sure you go. Yeah. Graver will come in motion, back to passes Dodge, looking left, throwing left, got a man down there, he is caught by Craver, Wide first open. down, down to the 20 yard line. Wide Dodge's open was Andy Craver, and what a great catch, he was spinning, his body Craver, was spinning back the other way as that ball was delivered to him. That was not an easy catch, but what a great job by Andy Craver. 
22 yard line of Frontier, so they're almost in the red zone now. First down and 10, 6.45 to play, 21-21 is our score. First catch by Craver tonight, he had five for 93 yards last week against Mahar and two touchdowns. Caught a touchdown in the Lee and Athol games as well this season. Backs are in the eye formation. Wyatt Keith, the left side, found a hole. Keeps the pile pushing forward, but then he's down around the 20 yard line. That's a gain to two. It'll be second down and eight from there. Big third down conversion there for Turner's Falls. Lots of things they can do from here now. Second and eight, getting deep in the Red Hawk territory. Like you said, play action's always on the table when you get Keith coming out of the backfield. Dodge went to Crystal Point to get the play call. He now rejoins the huddle. Clock continues to move. We're about halfway through the fourth quarter here. We are tied at 21. Keith is the lone back. Coming in motion. It goes to Lavin on a sweep. Turns the corner. Breaks out of a tackle. Cuts back against the rain. Still going inside the 10 yard line. First and goal for Turner's Falls. The first carry to Tyler didn't work out so well. That one did. Yeah, you know, I haven't seen all his carries, but I've seen his numbers and uh, not a lot of luck coming out of the backfield. That right there, you showed some speed to get to the corner, and then he ran Hildreth over at the end of that play for an extra couple yards. And what a huge play that was. First down and goal for Turner's now. Big run by Lavin. Ball's on the eight yard line of Frontier. So four cracks at it from here. Now for Big Blue, trying to reclaim the lead. We've had several, several momentum changes here tonight. Lone back is Keith. Coming in motion again is Lavin. They go to Keith, though. Big opening on the left side, but it closes quickly. He got the ball down to the five yard line. Second and goal from there after a gain of three. Gain of three gives him 194. Second and goal. Three touchdowns is his season high. And three touchdowns against Greenfield. 239 yards and three touchdowns. He's got three in this one. Clock in motion, 4.45 to play in the football game. Boy, and Turner's gonna take their time too, aren't they? Just gonna let that clock run down and. You know, if it was, if there was a minute and a half less time in this game or two minutes left, if you're frontier, you, most, you might oh, want to say, let them go in. Use your timeouts. Keith. Left side, jumps towards the goal line, but gets batted back inside the five. They're gonna spot him down around the three yard line, but again, the clock continues to go. 4.15 to play. I mean, obviously they're gonna get the ball back with uh, with some time, but Turner's Falls will need to claim a lead. They're definitely in Tyler Lavin range for a potential field goal here, but they, they want the set for sure. Oh, absolutely. Again, third down, running some guys in and out, We're using up the play clock, clock now under four minutes to go. Here in the fourth in a tie ball game. Third and goal from the three yard line. Confront your hold two more times here. We'll get our answer here in a moment. Casting now is in at fullback. They give the keep. Right side down towards the goal line. Did not get in. He's short of the goal line. He's down to the one. Wow. And that puts him right at 200 yards on the evening. 3.30, clock is still rolling now. Yeah, three and a half left to play here. Turners will not snap this ball until close to three, less than three minutes to play in the game. Great drive here, some great third down conversions by Turners Falls. And they're gonna leave Frontier with about two and a half minutes, two or three quarter minutes or so. Yeah, two and a half by the time they kick this thing, if they punch it in. If they score, yeah, that's, I mean, it's, at the one yard line, you think they can score from here. All right, here they come out now. I formation. Dodge oh. calls the signals, and what do we got? We got a flag. One of the Frontier men jumped across. What did we get? No. Oh, timeout called first. Turners. Turners called the timeout before that snap. We will take a quick 30 second timeout. 2.54 to play. We're tied at 21 on Bear Country 95.3. All right, we are back now. Fourth down and goal from the one yard line in a 21-21 game with 2.54 to play. Turner's Falls looking to reclaim the lead. They come out with the backs, Lavin and Keith. 
In the I formation, yeah. Dodge will take it himself in. He is in to the end zone for the touchdown. Yeah, pretty easy call right there. You got a big old offensive line in front of your quarterback. He's an athletic kid. And they just pushed that line back into the end zone. So Turner's falls down 14, tied it. Down 21, 14, tied it. Frontier now down by seven. After this Lavin kick, we're gonna assume he makes because he is Mr. Automatic, right? He has been uh, tremendous these uh, last few years for sure. He will kick out of Dodge's hold, try to make it a seven point lead. The snap is back, it's down, the kick is up, the kick is good. Timeout on the field. We have 2.52 left to play in this one and our score on the car quest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne scoreboard. It's now Turner's Falls 28, Frontier 21 on Bear Country 95.3. Well, so many times, Sean, that we as broadcasters and newspaper writers, bloggers, people just in the communities and the coffee shops, they build up these games and they don't quite match the hype. This one did. Uh, you know, again, Turner's Falls down 14 early, come back, tie that thing at half and take the lead. Frontier come back to tie. Now Turner's with the lead, but we were just talking off air. Plenty of time, 2.52 to play in the game. Frontier has four timeouts. Yep. Time not a factor at the moment for them. Keith has it teed up on the 40 yard line. That's the first Turner's touchdown that was not scored by Wyatt tonight. Hits it down and it's taken by Blight. Tiptoes across the sideline. Nice return by him up to the 38, 39 yard line. And with 2.47 left to play, Turner's leads by seven. Frontier at it, first down and 10. Uh, we talked about the Turner's defense and how brilliant they've been, particularly over the last three weeks. And Again, they held R.J. Bird to under 40 yards, but they beat him by 35 to eight. Only gave up the one score. McCann, they beat 27-6, just giving up the one score. The Mahar game, they won 28-7. Those were the last three weeks in a row. They've given up 21 here to Frontier, but Frontier wants to make it 28. 247 to go, down by seven. Fourth quarter. Three receivers to the near side left. Out of the shotgun formation, Hildreth will take it. Turner's Falls still waiting for him. And he spins away and somehow is able to gain a yard to the 40 yard line because Turner's, I mean, they were blue and white everywhere. Yeah, boy, he started out with Kyle Dodge on him and then he ended up running into John Fritz who ended up knocking him out of bounds. Give him a gain of oh, just about a yard on that play, but. Clock in motion, 2.25 to play as he, they're gonna rule that he was in bounds. Now the clock may down. be starting to be a factor here a little bit. And four timeouts for Frontier, but they, only on their own 40 yard line. Now three receivers to the far side right this time. Again, out of the shotgun, Hildreth will roll to the right. Steps up, throws, has a man open. It is caught by McMillan. A flag though comes in. Oh, and the ball's out. The ball is loose. Turner's fall says they have it. Boy, they ripped it out. That's a fumble. No, they, they're gonna say it's frontier ball, but we also have a flag behind the play. So what, the, what do we got? The ball we got, got ripped out. It was on the ground. Turner's recovery. Now, depending on the penalty. Yeah, this is going to come back anyway. Frontier's responding as though they know. Yeah, illegal man downfield. Okay. The illegal man downfield. So that's going to negate that first down gain. Well, they're going to say that that was not a catch then as well, right? Because if it had been a catch, it would have been a catch and a fumble. And Turner's Falls would have had the ball. So. At either rate, it's going to be a bad penalty for the Red Hawks. 2.06 to play here. Okay, so, and you know, the chain gang, again, you know, they took off down the field. They should have waited. The ball was on the 40. Uh, the first down marker was on the 38-yard line. The line of scrimmage was the 40. Yeah, 40-yard line. Yeah, 38. They need to bring yeah. that first chain back to the yeah. 38. I used to work a chain gang when <laughs> I was in, when I was in uh, junior high and high school, and the, the uh, side judge would always say, don't leave until I wave you down because there could be a penalty. He yeah. would say, and he was serious. He would, he would look at me and say, do not move. Even if you see a play for a first down, do not move until I tell you to. And don't forget to go get the T. <laughs> and get the T. <laughs> <laughs> Goes back to the first quarter here. Yeah, we were at a little T issue there, but. So they're gonna mark the penalty off from the 40 yard line, which was the line of scrimmage, back to the 35 yard line. And it's actually second down. They have the yard marker on the side. He has a first down. It's actually second down. 
There it is, he's got it. Second down in 14 from back at the 35 yard line. Hildreth on the direct snap. Turner's falls is able to come through and rough him up and Castine's helmet fell off, but he didn't care as he made the hit. Fritz uh, did a nice job on the corner getting around the outside front. You'll call a timeout right here. We're gonna keep it here, 153 to play. So looking good for Turner's, it's going to be third down and long for Frontier. Yeah, Fritz, uh, Fritz caused him to have to run Hildreth back inside versus trying to cut outside and yeah, man, he ran smack into the big guy. Well, that play, that quarterback draw worked great for Frontier on their last drive. They went yeah. uh, exclusively to Hildreth. There was some pack, there was that uh, few passes in there as well, but uh, but no here in the forest. No, he's not touched the ball in the second half. We saw him come off the field. He's out on the field, but boy, yeah, as you said, he didn't look good. He was holding his arm, his leg didn't look good. Yeah, he's not had a touch here in the second half at all, I don't believe, in all those draws that we've seen. 153 to play in the game. Turner's 28, Frontier 21. Third down and about 14 here. And now we have another stoppage of play. Be a Turner's timeout. The timeout is going to be called by Turner's Falls this time. Looks like they had the wrong personnel out there. So it looks like you want to have a different couple different guys in. We're going to keep it here because this is going to be quick. Yeah, I think that was just a personnel timeout. Well, no. Yep, this is not like a huddle up here on the sideline timeout. Well, they do have the captain over there. I'm going to say, yeah, they're talking, but it's uh, they're taking advantage of the timeout that they used. We're going to keep it right here. We don't want to miss a play here. 153 to play. Turner's by seven. We'll have our post game show coming up, including our player of the game. But we. A lot of times, Sean, we get to this part, part of the game, we know who's going to win, we know who the player of the game is, but that is still open for debate. Uh, it absolutely is, depending on what Frontier does on this drive. Just under two minutes to play, down by seven. Huge play here, third down and 14, Hildreth. No, direct snap, two to Forrest, heavy rush. Takes up on the right side, getting away from Peterson. Let's it fly, this could get picked. A leaping catch, are you kidding me? Who caught it? If it was caught, it intercepted it. It's Hildreth! Wow! Whoa! What an amazing play! I did see a flag at the end of the play. No, the officials put it in the way. It just popped out. What a throw by DeForest and a catch by Hildreth to the Turner's Falls 33 yard line. And with a minute 42, the Hawks have some life. Boy, he went up, the linebacker went up, the ball came in, and I wasn't sure exactly who caught it. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And Hildreth wow. it away and ended up with the catch. Well, Frontier might not win this football game, but let me tell you something, you just, they're tough. You well, can never count these guys out. Again, I wouldn't even go that far, because right now where they are, down by seven, again, now the clock not really a factor. Minute 42. No, not with 142. Yeah. Not, not, not with the fact that they gained so much yardage there. Yeah. The ball's on the 32-yard line of Turner's Falls. Oh, like no, they're going to spot it forward. They're... Oh, 15 yarder here. Oh, there what was a flag. Call that. So there was a flag. Uh, and now that changes everything yep. here. Yep. The First ball now minutes. is going to get brought inside the Turner's Falls 20 yard line. So Shotgun formation to Hildreth. Kirkendall. Gives Kirkendall on the right side. Not much there. He gets no, stacked up and pushed carry. back. Maybe a yard, if that. So many pivotal plays just in these last few plays alone. DeForest hadn't touched the ball in the second half at all. Frontier has called the timeout. We need to spot the ball here. There's the 5, 10, 15. And I'm looking at it at an angle. It looks like it's just outside the 15-yard line, I believe. And it'll be second down and nine. Yeah, I've had a tough time reading this field tonight, too, for some reason. I don't know. Right now there's a full timeout, and we will take the break as well. 128 left to play in the football game of the Car Crest of Greenfield, South Deerfield and Shelton scoreboard. Turner's Falls 28, Frontier 21. Support for FCAP coverage of high school sports provided by Attorney Daniel Gray is Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 773-8706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ service, voted best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Second Community down Access down Television. And about 10 for Frontier. And the ball looks like it is just inside 
where we'll see where it is. Just outside the 15 yard yeah. line. Yeah. We'll call it the 17, I guess. Well, we were saying earlier, we'd like a back and forth game. We'd like a game that comes right down to the last minute or two. And that's what you got right now, a minute and a half. Hildreth under center. McMillan goes in motion. He's back to pass, steps up, throws on the left side, looking for Freeman's got him inside the five yard line. It's going to be first down and goal, this frontier passing attack. They're not known for doing well, this shot. Not this season, but we knew he'll just put to it. We thought he'd throw a little more this year. We thought he'd run a little more this year, and he didn't do a lot of either. 25 pass attempts on the season, and he's hoisted it up about 15 times in this one. A lot of draw plays to him as well. Now Frontier, a minute 15 to go, clock is rolling. Down by seven. First and goal from the five yard line. We could possibly be looking at overtime here. If Frontier can score here and get the conversion. And they almost don't want to score right away and leave that much time for Turner's, for Turner's either. Turner's falls, yes. Hildreth, he will take it himself on the left side. And he gets down to inside the five to around the four. Yeah, they're going to burn another timeout. They will have one timeout remaining here. Frontier will keep it. We're going to keep it here at the field. No, full timeout. All right, we'll take the break. 50 seconds left to play in the football game. 28 21 Turners back after this on Bear Country 95.3. All right, Jeff and Hubie back here in South Deerfield. It's second down and goal from the four yard line for Frontier. The Red Hawks trail by seven, 28 to 21 with 50 seconds left in the game. Can you, can you smell it? Can you smell the overtime? They break the huddle, we'll see. Hildreth under center, Turner's Falls bunching it in defensively. Matt pitches it, left side. Here's the Forrest finally, and he is gonna go into the end zone. Touchdown, Garrett DeForest. Injured in the third quarter, has been very quiet, and he scores from four yards out, and we are one extra point kick away from a tie game. He was, uh, he was very quiet in the second half. I believe that might have been his first carry. Ten carries for 56 yards in the first half. We saw he was dinged up, and what a big carry there for Garrett DeForest, second touchdown of the night for him. Now, do you go for two, or do you kick the extra point? We're going to play it safe and kick an extra point here, at least line up that way. They're going to go for the tie here. Snap down, placement down, the kick is up, the kick is good. We are tied at 28. Wow. 45 seconds left to play. Car quest of Greenfield. South Deerfield and Shelburne Falls scoreboard. We're tied at 28. Back after this on Bear Country 95.3. Jacob Bryant has a teed up on the 40-yard line for Frontier. And we will see what the strategy is here, how deep they kick it, yeah, and what kind of coverage. 45 seconds left, not a lot of time for Turners, but they do have three timeouts. Here comes the kick, they top it, and it is picked up by Craven. On the right side, he's down to the 35 yard line. 40 seconds left here, and now how aggressive will Chris LaPointe and Turners Falls be here? Well, even handing the ball to Keith is aggressive. You know, you get that kid in space, and he can take it a long way. So yeah, do you keep it on the ground? Maybe the first play you run, Although, as you said, they got a pretty good quarterback and some guys that can catch the ball. I think Chris LaPointe will be fairly aggressive here. See if he can get himself into a Tyler Lavin field goal position. Well, they're 65 yards away from a touchdown, but probably more like 40 yards away from a potential field goal. They go to Keith on first down. Has it in the secondary, then got popped at the end. It will go for a first down. Time is out as they reset the they chain. The he stop. brought the ball to the 48-yard line. Turner takes their time out. Did they, did they burn the T.O.? I, 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 know, I know they yeah. stopped it. Yeah, yeah. they did. Yeah. So they did take the timeout. Big and play there. It is a full timeout. We'll take a quick 30-second break here on Bear Country 95.3. Back after this. Well, switching gears here real quickly. Greenfield just completed a 36-12 win at home. Mahar, they get Athol at home next week, and then an away game at Belchertown, and then it's either a playoff game, which is kind of an outside shot right now for the way, or a non-qualifier game, but three wins in a row for the first Green and White, and here we are tied Turner's at 28. Turner's, Turner's Falls first and 10 from their own 48-yard line, a 28-28 tie in a game that has had multiple shifts 
in momentum. All right, I formation, two receivers to the far side left. Wyatt Keith up the middle, bounces to the right side. Still going, another first down to the Frontier 39 yard line, 27 seconds left in the game. They'll stop the clock to set the chains. Turner's has two timeouts left. 36 carries for 226 yards for Keith. The clock is rolling. Carries. Turner's is not bringing a timeout. They're gonna run to the line right now. They're trying to get it into the end zone, or at least close enough for a field goal. Dodge is back to pass now, throws over the middle. It is incomplete. Craver had it, got knocked away though. Nice defensive play there to bat it away. It'll be second down and 10, 13 seconds left here in the game. And that would have put Turner's in field goal range for Tyler Lavin. He's been true on all four of his extra points tonight. He's been kicking the ball extremely well for the last couple years. And that's really what Turner's needs right now. They have that timeout in their pocket. They have two timeouts, so they can take a shot, call the timeout, and they only have one more shot after that. 13 seconds left. Second and 10 from the 39-yard line of Frontier. Dodge under center. In motion is Craver. Straight drop back by Dodge. Looking left, throwing deep down the middle towards the end zone. Tipped away, nearly caught for a touchdown. Six That's seconds good. left in his third down. They were not going for field goal range on that throw. They were no, going for, they were going for the win. Yeah. They were going for the W Boy, right there. Twice wow. in a row, ball <laughs> delivered so well by Dodge. It could have been caught. Good defensive plays. So now Turner's fall, 6.8 seconds left. Turner's is going to call a timeout here. They're going to call their next to last timeout. We're going to keep it right here. All right, let's do a reset here. It is third down and 10 for Turner's. The ball at the 38-yard line of Frontier. 28-28 tie, 6.8 seconds left in the game. The game can't end. Um, on a defensive penalty, so let's see. With only six seconds, that's really not two plays. Boy, what do you do, Sean? Well, this is, this is if, if it was 12 seconds left, you could run two plays, one of them potentially being a field goal. And I'm thinking now that you know you really only have the one play, you know, a quick slant to the middle. If you get the ball to the 30-yard line, that's a 47-yard field goal. That's a long way for a high school kid to kick the ball. Hook and lateral? Well, either that or just, you know what, run Wyatt Keith and get the kid down as far as you can, close, and get your timeout. A pass play may take too long. You may not have another play, even though you have the timeout. For Dodge to load it up and throw it down the field, that's gonna burn that seven seconds. What a football game, and we're not done yet. All right, 38 yard line, third and 10. Six seconds left. Dodge is back to pass, they're gonna pass. They throw it to the left side, it's caught by Craver, but just a short game, and he never got out of bounds. They should have got the timeout well, in Well, let's I think, see, uh, yeah, yeah it's, the clock is showing zeros, but I wanna see, they yeah. may, tell they may have gotten that timeout yeah, from put, crystal I, point i think they're going to put a second or two back on that clock and i don't think they're in tight they're not in tyler's range no no so they're going to have to yeah are they going to put some more time yeah fourth down well, the hat's not off so we know the game's not over yeah. right and we're going to yeah we're going to have somebody come over yeah, yeah. coach stretch not happy about this decision but it is the right thing you can see where Craver was trying to get out of bounds. He never did. He got tackled, but Fourth there were about three Fourth seconds Fourth. left as he was going to the ground. And of course, Crystal Fourth Point standing right there, the signaling for that timeout. I think he got it in with under two seconds to play. Looks as though the referees agree because they're going to spot the ball, and yeah. Turner's is going to run a play here with no time on the clock, but just a second left in the game. 35 yard line, and they're going to send five receivers out there. Dodge will drop back to pass. Heavy rush. Gets away, takes off left side. Now it's all Dodge, still going to the 10. Oh, oh. oh my Dodge. And Dodge got it down to around the 10 yard line. Is stopped there and folks, we are going to overtime. Hey, first overtime game of the season for us. And really, would it be anything else that we would expect Fantastic. here with these two teams? Great performance by both teams, but we haven't settled anything yet. Fantastic. We will take a timeout here overtime coming up next here on Bear Country 95.3. All right, we are back here in South Deerfield. Game of the year is what we called it at the beginning of the broadcast, and it turned out truly to be the game of the year. We've gone to overtime here with really, although as we mentioned, no one can clinch any league championship here tonight. However, 
the winner of this game will have a huge advantage towards winning the Intercounty League North Championship. Both of these teams are a good bet to make it to the postseason in their respective divisions. Frontier in D7, Turner's Falls in D8. What a night of football, and we're not done yet. Well, we're going to see heavy doses of Hildreth and Keith here in the overtime. Those are going to be the guys I think you're going to see with the ball in their hands for the majority of it. The Frontier captains who have made their way out onto the field there with the referee. And we're waiting for Turner's Falls to gather up their captains who come out and flip the coin. Uh, at the beginning of the game, it was Turner's Falls winning the flip. They deferred, so they kicked in the first half. Right. But the ball will be placed on the 25-yard line. Yeah. Four downs, and you know, obviously, you can make first downs, and you the idea is you try to score. And then the other team, if you uh, so, let's just say we'll go through the scenarios. If a team scores on their drive, the team then the other team will get their opposition uh, opportunity to score. If they do, and they convert the same PAT that you did. The game continues. Well, we remember that epic uh, battle on Thanksgiving Day. Oh, yeah. The day after Thanksgiving Frontier Day. Frontier and Mohawk. After the big snowstorm. After the big snowstorm, yeah. Six overtimes, five, six overtimes in that thing. That was amazing. That was an amazing game. The game ended up, yeah, 40 something to 40 something. Boy, yeah. Frontier ended up. Yeah, and it was not a high scoring game, right? It was <laughs> yeah, all, right, almost, right. it was an overtime. It was all in overtime, yeah, all yeah. that scoring. Yeah. That, I think that was the last OT game that we that we had that what? I can remember. I, I was going to say, yeah. I know we haven't had one this season. I don't really remember one from last season. Yeah, that was epic. I just get back and forth, and that was a lot of fun. Frontier ended up winning that one. Okay, so the captain's now meeting at the center of the field. We have a delay for some reason. Turner's Falls has not come out yet. For here, come the, really come. here come the TF captains, including Kyle Dodge. Dodge, I mean, yeah, he was flinging it down there, man. Yeah. And then that last play, he said, never mind my arm, I'm going to use my legs and that elusiveness. Again, it, it's not a perfect comparison, obviously, but just the style of play when Dodge gets outside the pocket. I'm just remembering old number 22 for BC 30-some-odd yeah. years ago, just making things happen and just bringing a lot of excitement to that quarterbacking position. Yeah, he almost did. And again, he, they don't generally run a lot of design plays for him to run the ball. He just, uh, he, he, that's what I mean, he yeah, improvises. Yeah, he just gets it and all of a sudden he was getting chased around back there. Everybody like, was covered downfield. And Where's the air, you know? He yep. just says, where is that space? And right. he does a good job of finding it. All the way down to the 10. All the way down to the 10 from uh, back at the 38 yard line. So, nearly won the game right there. All right, so again, they're talking over the overtime rules right now, but each team will get their chance. If you hold the opposition, if they're up for their quote-unquote at-bat, now that we're in overtime, it's almost like, a uh, think of it inning. as a baseball inning. Yep. It's like an inning. Do you defer if you get this, or do you want to go first? That's a, that's a really good question, Sean. What would be the best course of action a lot of times you know, if you send your defense out there and you hold the other team then all you have to do is score but the bottom line is you have to score and hold so turner's falls looks like they'll be on offense first i believe on the other end of the it field like turner's won the toss i believe in uh frontier pick that end i think it's what i decipher i don't see any signals but all right we get set for overtime what a night entertaining night of football here yeah, it was everything that we had hoped it would be, and it really looked like it may not be in that first quarter. Again, Frontier scoring on two consecutive possessions, up 14 points. Turner's Falls really flat on offense there in the first quarter, but sprang to life in the second. Wyatt Keith right now, 10, 20, 30, 36 carries, 226 yards, went over 1,000 on the season. And again, the first kid I can think of to go over 1,000 yards at two different schools. Did it last year at Pioneer, of course, Pioneer no football program this season. Five guys came down from Pioneer to play here at Turner's Falls. Wyatt Keith being one of them. So two consecutive thousand yard seasons for that young man. Two different schools. We're uh, past nine o'clock now. This is WPVQ, WPVQ HD, Greenfield. Yeah, we, <laughs> a little loud, huh? Like, we'll, we got the frontier kids down behind the goalpost there. Almost like basketball season already. Yeah, exactly, behind, behind the uh, basket. All right, so here comes Turner's Falls out on offense first. We're going to see a lot of Wyatt Keith. Hey, that's it again. Yep. They spot the ball at the 10. So it's actually at the 10 yard line where they put it down. Of course, the clock is out. There's no time. It has no meaning at this point of the game. Yep. Downs don't, uh, distances doesn't matter. Four plays to get it in and then hold. First down. They go 
to Keith. He got stacked up at the line of scrimmage and got driven back. We'll give him a gain of one to the nine. Second and goal from there. Again, this is overtime, top of the first, we'll call it. At the bottom of the first will be Frontier's possession. And of course, a field goal is in play. If Turner Falls gets to fourth down and they don't feel like they can knock one in, Tyler Lavin could always attempt a field goal, take the 31, 28 feet. But of course, Turner Falls wants to get the touchdown. Second down from the nine. Play action, Dodge rolling to the right, looking back into the end zone, throwing down there for Whiting, a diving attempt for the catch. Did he get it? Oh, wow. Great catch down there. Touchdown. And that will go for six. Wow, what a catch. I thought that was going to be intercepted. Whiting slid in behind the defender. I don't know how he made that catch. That was tremendous. Great catch there by Jaden Whiting, and it is 34-28. And now Turner's Falls has their PAT opportunity. Uh, and the catch. They're going to kick with Lavin to go up again by seven. And again, Frontier will get their opportunity to score and try to tie it up here. 34-28 Turner's, Lavin kicking. The placement down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Perfect. 35-28, Turner's Falls here in the first overtime. And now we go to the bottom half of this quote-unquote inning. And it'll be Frontier Ball on the 10-yard line. They'll get four cracks at it to try to score and send this to overtime number two. Well, we'll see how healthy Garrett DeForest is. He did have that big carry late in the game. He had a big throw late in the game as well. Those were the only two times he handled the ball in the second half. Pretty beat up. You could tell he's hurting. And by the way, in terms of statistics, the overtime statistics in terms of rushing and passing are not part of the not part of the to total mix. Touchdowns, obviously, points yep. scored are. All right, Frontier now. A turnover here now would end the game. They have four yep. downs. Yep, they go to DeForest. He'll take it on the right side. Not a lot there. And he's going to bring it for maybe a yard or two inside the 10. It'll be second down from there. Yep. Turner's Falls 35, Frontier 28 and OT. Marked him up just a smidge, so we'll call it second and nine. But three more plays for the Hawks here. Frontier scored on second down. Uh, rather, Turner's Falls just scored on second down on that rollout TD pass dodge to Whiting. Second down. They go to McMillan. He's bottled up and driven back for a big loss. Look at the Turner's defense. Back outside the 10-yard line, Anthony Peterson is tuning and hollering out there. It'll be third down and long. This does open up things for a pass here. I'm sure they're going to pass here on third down. You would think so, unless they keep this on the ground and throw it on fourth down. Either way, it's going to involve Hildreth, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's a keeper for him. Turner's Falls needs to hold on two more plays, and they will get the overtime win on the road. Can they do it? Can Frontier keep this game going? We're about to find out. If we go to a second overtime, Frontier's offense will be first. And now, what do we got? Timeout call by Frontier. We're going to keep it right here. So the ball now is outside the 10 yard line. The ball's on the right side hash mark. So yeah, there's a lot of room for Hildreth to roll to the left. Yeah. He'd be throwing against his body, but he's shown that he can get he can get it there. Or roll and run, you know what I mean? That's, that'll be his first option, I think, is to roll him out so you can get him some blocks. Like, it makes the most sense, but yeah, there'll be guys down in the end zone he'll be looking for as well. If they end up throwing a pass play here, I'm guessing that's what they're gonna do, roll him out. He'll give him the opportunity to find the end zone himself or find a man in the end zone with a pass. But the Turner's defense are high right now. Boy, after that play there, two consecutive plays where they held Frontier. First down and goal, second down and goal. Now it's third down and goal. Turner's breaks their huddle on the sidelines. All right, teams back on the field. 13-yard line, third down for Frontier here in overtime number one. Turner's leading 35 to 28. Again, our post-game show coming up, but let's see if we can finish this game here first. Under center is Hildreth. And they get it right back to him. He's in big trouble, rolling to the left. 
throws down towards the goal uh, line. It's out of yeah. bounds, had to get rid of it. And now it'll be fourth down from the 13 yard line. That play was not run crisply at all. Nope, but that's exactly what we thought we'd get right there. Yeah. Yeah. Rolling yeah. left and looking downfield, and then Turner's falls chased him out of the backfield directly to the line, uh, the sideline. And Hildreth just had to dump that ball low. There were two Turner's defenders closer than a frontier receiver. He was just trying to not lose yards. He'd have been down back around the 20-yard line. Well, Hildreth made that great catch on that last drive to tie the game in this fourth quarter here. That was a kind of a miracle play there, and they need one more here just to try to keep this game going. All right, here they go. They're going to set up two receivers to the far side left. Hildreth out of the shotgun formation, fourth from the 13. Play action, he's back to pass, heavy rush, dumps it off, that's gonna that's do it. Ball game. Turner's Falls has that won it, they came with the heat, and they win it in overtime, 35 to 28, and they have the inside track to the league championship. What a game here by both teams, and Turner's Falls gets a hard-earned W. Our final score on the car quest of Greenfield, South Deerfield, and Shelburne scoreboard. Turner's Falls 35, Frontier 28. We're back to wrap it up after this on Bear Country 95.3. coverage of high school sports provided by attorney Daniel Gray is Esquire. In addition to being Deerfield's town moderator, Dan is a practicing attorney. Call his Greenfield office at 7738706 for all your legal needs. Bobby C's DJ service, voted the best mobile disc jockey in the valley for five years running. Book your next party now at bobbycsdjservice.com. Holiday Pizza in the center of South Deerfield. Holiday Pizza is the official pizza of Frontier Community Access Television. All right, welcome to our post-game show here on Bear Country 95.3. Turner's Falls with a 35 to 28 victory in overtime here over the Frontier Red Hawks. Jeff and Sean here in the booth, Dave Reno, our studio producer. My only regret is that these two teams can't play again this year yeah. because in the postseason, Turner's Falls is Division 8, Frontier's D7. They will both probably, uh, likely, well, Turner's Falls almost for sure will be in uh, Frontier as well, barring something crazy down the stretch. I, I would love to see these teams play again. That, that was a lot of fun here tonight, Sean. It really was. And again, it was something that we thought would be a great game coming into it. The two different teams, a little diverse, you know, different, different styles, but uh, Frontier came out and they did some different things than we've seen them do all season long, throwing the ball a little more, uh, using their quarterback Hilder to run the ball a little bit more. Hadn't really done a whole lot of that all season. The Wildcat, they mixed in, that worked a couple times. Uh, so fun on that side of the ball. Turner's Falls, I did. the story was to feed Wyatt Keith and that's what they did. Of course, Kyle Dodge had some huge plays down the stretch as well. Uh, we expected that from him. Not a lot of big mistakes, not a lot of big penalties, uh, not a lot of turnovers and things like that. Well played game both sides of the ball. Boy, Frontier takes that 14 point lead right off the bat and we just looked at each other and went, oh boy, well, maybe this one isn't gonna be the game that we <laughs> thought it was gonna be. Yeah. Uh, Turner's ties it at the half at 14 and uh, back and forth we went with Turner's scoring the final touchdown uh, in overtime. Tremendous. Anytime you run for over 200 yards and score three touchdowns, you're probably going to be the player of the game, and uh, certainly the case with Wyatt Keith. What a night for that young man. Again, again. Yeah, uh, yeah again, uh, you, know, you look back at his season so far, and again, yeah, 216 yards against Dathal, 239 against Greenfield, 216 against Mahar. He's run for over 100 in every game. I had him for about 225 yards in this one, uh, over 1,000 yards. You mentioned that as well. That's his banner up there with... Tavares Brewington and Nate Underwood and Topher Prondecki and boy I'm going to miss a whole bunch of guys but Rye 2K <laughs> and Trent Borbo and uh, Quinn Doyle and uh, they're going to hang his name in that bend on that banner at Turner's Falls he's got a banner with his name on it already up at Pioneer from last season so quite an accomplishment for that young man but tonight he was just the workhorse again 10 20 30 30 37 carries I think that's a season high for Wyatt Keith yeah he had 33 against yeah. that also yeah. uh, 37 carries two two and a quarter for yards three touchdowns and boy yeah player of the game right there what a great game really by both teams 
So Turner Falls wins it by a final score of 35 to 28 in overtime tomorrow night live from Dalton. It'll be Northampton at Wakona, 5 to 45 pregame, and we'll kick it off at 6 o'clock. For Sean Hubert and our studio producer, Dave Reno, I'm Jeff Terrell. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, and have a great night in bear country, everybody.